That's how we roll, guys. <laughs> yeah. We barely make it, but we make it, dude. That's how we do. You so muted. My, I was like, dude, no, it's like I went to go unmute and my my fucking battery died. That's probably happened a few times. <laughs> Literally frozen in the middle of my screen. What's up, y'all? It's Anthony Cali Death Podcast here, uh, episode one seventy one. We were just talking about how we've been doing it for this long. We still don't know how the fuck to do it, but we made it, guys. And. I'm here with a resident homie right now. We might see Casey later. Joseph's out trotting the planet, kicking his double bass everywhere he goes. But uh, Joel Horner's with me tonight. What up, dude? What up? What up? And uh, tonight we got Justin and Danny from Through the Eyes of the Dead, dude. What up, Justin? What up, Danny? What up? What up? Hell yeah, dudes. This is... uh. <laughs> Sorry about that intro to the the picture that was like because there was so many back and forth with the picture that like it turned out to be you two and then like it just like I think someone was like just time crunch and they just put the whole band there so the whole band's someone, not here the professor. but uh, we got two major motherfuckers in that band so yes sir two homies most definitely dude oh, and yeah. uh, we were just talking pre pod about um, nostalgia and and what it, what it the sounds of when we were doing shit like well i mean you guys are doing more shit than me i haven't fucking done shit since since the odious album which well that's three years ago or whatever dude i just saw that you guys uh put out a recent album i just noticed that i thought the last one was like 2010 2007 <laughs> actually yeah, dude. word word yeah yeah even yeah. earlier but uh yeah we got another I one. Just already. noticed, yeah. I haven't listened to it. I found out about this like two hours ago, but hell yeah, it's awesome. definitely gonna be. I uh, just found out about it. Yeah, yeah. Our, our new one though is gonna be. I know it's that's what everyone fucking says. How annoying is that? It's like, <laughs> it's like, dude, our new one's gonna crush, but it, but it yeah. is. It's not no, there's crush. so just a quick little thing about synesthesia. I there's so much of that record that has all of us in it, you know, and yeah. um we had this idea of kind of doing like this time capsule thing because we took that break after cryptic you know everybody i these guys went to decrepit i fucked with severed and and we kind of even though we never fully said odious is done because it never was going to be done in our hearts and brains but um we took a break from it and it ended up being 13, 14 years. Well, a little less than that for us behind the scenes to get it ready. But 14 years or whatever after Cryptic, we finally got this thing out. And it was kind of us being like, mm, all the fucking clean production and all this stuff just isn't hitting that same spot that that early 2000 sound was so we wanted to try and emulate that again and also use all the all the tools and people that we used were all from relationships that we've had for decades and everybody who's involved in that album has not been a or has been a friend of at least one of us for more than two decades. It was, yeah. it was like a really, it was a family project that, that was slowly chipped at over those 14 years. And we, some hiccups happened. We've mentioned it on previous uh, episodes, but the guy we were recording with, he ended up passing away. And so 
we had all our money put in that direction and then we had nothing, you know, and he was a good friend too. And uh, shout out John RIP. And, and then, so we're like, well, what do we do now? So we got another homie, Richard, who did a, a killer job for not being a metal producer. He's, he's done great work, but you know, By the way, have you seen Richard's Spotify? Not recently. Dude's got like fucking like songs with like 25 million listens. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. I was like, what the fuck, Richard? <laughs> like he's I was he's just a buddy of ours, but he does like a lot of acoustic kind of surfy kind of chill rock stuff. And he's like all humongous. And I was like, I had no yeah. idea. He's like quietly humongous. <laughs> I was like, it's awesome. Not to try yeah. and keep this off on our our you know, talking about us, but that's one thing about meeting these odious dudes is every person that is affiliated with them, friends with them, ends up being this really super creative person in whatever they do. We're, Everybody that I've known that makes shit out of the odious camp and outside of it, um, they're all super prolific people. Um, but sometimes, you know, you try and mix that stuff and and the wavelengths still don't always hit. That's just us as the artists saying, oh, the production on this maybe could be different. We wanted it a little, maybe a little bit. No, it was it basically great, dude. It's just a risk that we took. We took a risk where we were yeah. like, dude, dude, a uh, good friend passed away. Like, let's figure out how to record it on our own. And we just like had to do like a DIY album from like our rooms, like to redo mm -hmm. it, to do mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff. And mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we're all was, was boomers in that realm. At least <laughs> I am, dude. Not it's like, how about no education? Let's record an album dude, and then put it on a label. <laughs> like, it's gonna be great. <laughs> but no, but it has like a it has a, a sound that I love because it's got just rawness and this, you know, just totally us figuring it out one by one in our different areas and different parts of the of California and just trying to figure it out. And it was it was fun. It was a cool little yeah, dude. And experiment. you guys executed great great for everything that we had and uh yeah i'm proud of all the lyrics and all that stuff so yeah dude synesthesia dude that's that's the long fucking oh, dusty just showed just joined in the instagram ah oh, dude oh i thought you were about to say he's in the chat i'm i'm looking he, no I'm... no i'm on the instagram dusty severed your shout out dusty yeah anyways let's get back on the so we have yeah, let's guests, move away I from think. us now <laughs> <laughs> Dude, dude I, I, I was totally ready to just talk about odious for, <laughs> for sure. 45 minutes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I want to hear well, the What's chin. funny is the last episode, the dude that we talked to, Albert, shout out uh, Pierre. Wait, wait. Did I just fuck up Whatever. his name? Yeah. We don't have to. This All guy? right. I just totally fucked up his name. <laughs> well, wait, say, show him again. Did it say his name on there? Philip, I said, Philip, dude, what the fuck am I doing, man? <laughs> Last week, and it, what a disrespectful thing. Um, we had him on, and and post pod, he was like, "Oh, you're in Severed Savior and Odious Morning." <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> <laughs> so I could have talked about that a lot on the podcast if I knew. I guess we don't really plug the bands at all on this thing, really. We don't. I don't say what up dudes I'm Anthony Trapney from this band and this band and this band or whatever. I just say I'm fucking your host, dude. Uh, so <laughs> people are just tuning in half ass with no in, uh like research then they don't they're never going to know what I do. I'm just this idiot that talks to these metal bands, dude. And you line cars <laughs> very well. Just make cars go straight, dude. <laughs> 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 All right, let's uh let's do the uh little quick ah, thingies. Ah, yeah. Uh, now, now I gotta hear me talking more at BattleforgeCoffee.com. <laughs> That's where uh, we get our coffee. Like I was saying last week, I got a I got a bag that I I'm gonna be breaking into soon. I I don't have anything to grind it with right now, but I'm gonna bring it up to. Uh, Just gonna Rockland. chew on them. Yeah, dude. Actually, that's something <laughs> that I'm actually down with. I chew on coffee beans so, for sure. Deeds of Flesh Coffee. It's Deeds of Flesh's coffee <laughs> company. You guys gotta check homies. it out. It's yeah. good stuff. Oh yeah. And then, and then uh generator rehearsal and uh Ocean Oceanside, California, SoCal area. That's where uh we would like you to check it out if you want a rehearsal spot 
to build and create uh An podcast dot pig <laughs> dot pig cartel pig cartel <laughs> We're Cali starting a new one. We have a new merch one. It's a big cartel, dude. That big cartel <laughs> is where you could buy one or two shirts from us. And that's the only thing that we sell. We don't make it money anywhere else with this thing. All right. Enough about us and this. Let's talk about Through the Eyes of the Dead. Where do you guys want people to go for information, merch, all that stuff? Um. We have uh, our big cartel as well, ttotd.bigcartel.com. I mean, we just post mostly on like Facebook, Instagram, and you know, just it's usually just like facebook.com slash tteotd. Um, but yeah, that's uh, we're not on the, the TikTok train just yet. So, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, neither are we. <laughs> have we. People have told us we should be, but that's just. We we got we got one. Casey like one time figured it out and was like just posted a, like fifty videos to it at once. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that algorithm was gonna really help. But, one time uh, he figured it out, dude. I actually made one for us uh, recently, um, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, so I made like some weird videos, and then I was like, "Yeah, this isn't for me." <laughs> yeah. One day, <laughs> yeah. When everyone not... stops using it, I'll I'll probably start posting more. Yeah, TikToks. I'm. I'm it's one of those like kind of like line in the sand things where i'm just like i'm no i'm not doing it <laughs> yeah we kind of need a exactly. young buck but we don't have any money to pay any young bucks to do it for us so we just... mm -hmm. and i see how people like get like and i you know I'll, I'll doom scroll on fucking instagram in the morning when i wake up and stuff and, and look at a bunch of shit but i i know that's like the ultimate doom scrolling app that you can get is just like just a bunch of those reels or clips and stuff mm -hmm. and i'm like fuck i don't need another one of those dude, dude it's already... just like misinformation <laughs> yeah just... like nothing yeah. is real you don't know what the fuck to believe like, you hit like an algorithm or something and oh, i remember I, I had an algorithm once with one video that i had it was just a silly video of me like waking up in the morning and it was like it wasn't on tiktok but it was on instagram and it was just like that one of those clips was all shit piss cock fuck like it was like just saying a bunch of cuss words as you wake up in the morning and i like it got three thousand views in like three minutes and i was like what the fuck is going on and then like it just stopped and i was like oh it, it must have got in the the fucking algorithm loop for yeah. just a second and then just like kicked out but yeah it's it's people are always trying to find on the uh, instagram or tiktok they're like oh dude you gotta hit the hit the fucking algorithm dude you know the yeah, algo dude, <laughs> you're just tripping me out right now to hear the hear that it's it's a moving it's like a river that's flowing. it's trying to find the like the little portal like you everyone's trying to find the portal like to get the algorithm they're like oh do i need to like try to like dive in that portal at the right time and like say the right things and hashtag the right things and then it just catches on to it and throws you in for a little while and if it picks on from there it picks up from there then it just like blows up I it's like the people... eac and finding nemo dude you gotta fucking jump in just right dude and jump out just right dude because if you don't you're gonna miss your exit you know <laughs> dude i'm so I glad actually... i uh go ahead yeah i'm so glad i just stay off of all that stuff i uh i really bury my head in the sand uh the it's only smart. information I have is on Twitter, and it's all football related. Nice. That's, that's nice. it, dude. Like, yeah, I yeah. Mean, ignorance is bliss. You know. Yeah. No, it is. It is. <laughs> I post mostly football things too. Actually, Anthony could attest too. I have yes. like four on my story right now. I'm, I'm constantly just trying to. I mean, you can get Instagram like down to like just what you want it to be, if, as long as what you click on yeah. and stuff like that. Like, you can get it down to like, don't show me like the stuff that's gonna piss me off. Just show me like. The stuff that's going to give me dopamine please like i don't want you know but there it. is there is the person that wants to be fed all the stuff that's going to piss him off all day oh yeah know? a lot of it, people. it becomes it becomes a, a drug an addiction mm -hmm. to be fed all that negativity and it and it needs to come in waves you know it, dude i i can attest to that like there i there's sometimes where uh you know where you see a post and you're like, all right, if I open up, <laughs> if I see these comments, it's going to piss me off. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I better not. Yeah. But I'm going to anyways. You <laughs> There's part of you that still does it, dude. Next yeah. thing you know, it's like, God, I fucking hate people. 
Uh, it, you post uh, something that you're like, you're like all fucking like furious about it, like fucking whatever, blah blah. And then like all of a sudden, you wake up in the morning, it's like a bunch of replies. People are like, you're an idiot, you're the dumbest person <laughs> ever, blah. And you're like, fuck, <laughs> I like, want to like get even worse. On there. The best part is when you you see like one of your homies like actually comment on one of them. You're like, yo, what? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, you get you feel like you got. You you kind of yeah you're in it now because a homie it, there's like an in now like oh yeah yeah I got a little got bit posted. closer to the fire by accident dude, <laughs> just by proxy. <laughs> uh, it's uh, actually shout out that Dan Soder stand up because cra- that's like one of my favorite new stand ups. But um, he like was talking about how like how funny it is to see one of your buddies. He's all dude. I love. He went into this like I love like oily butt pics on Instagram. <laughs> Not for the pictures, but just for the comments. Of people are like. <laughs> I hope you had a great day today. He's like, ugh. But he's all, but then it always rats their friends out. Like, it's like, it's just, oh, liked by 47,000 people. And Jeff liked it too. <laughs> You're like, oh, Jeff, dude, Jeffy, what are you doing? Dude? <laughs> it was so good because it does, rat, it like shows your mutual friend likes, like right in the front. It's like, yeah, 50,000. It's like, oh, Frank and Bob liked it too. Dude, you got to rip on them. <laughs> Um, I mean, those types of things are irritating. But one of the most comment, the irritating comment things for me is to know that it's totally staged, whatever video is. And then you hit the comments and like the first 30 or 40 people are all people that fell for it, you know? Yeah. And they don't, they, there's, I'm waiting for the one guy to call, one guy or gal to call it out. And I'm going, the further you go down the list of people not calling it out, you're just like, what the fuck is going on with society, dude? How could you not know that that's an actor doing this? But that's just, <laughs> you know, that's the whole point of fucking social media. They got me locked in right there, dude. Right I'm there down they to, fuck, I lost. I lost it, by being like, Argh. if there was a button to like just ban all social media i would press i would press it for sure i would i would i think it's like not to get like you know down that rabbit hole but i, I think it's completely negative I, I, there, I don't think anything comes good from it it's you know people especially for and for me i didn't have it in high school i was you know i'm 30 i'm 39 i didn't have it in high school it was just coming up in high school or right after high school it was like uh, myspace was like right after high school for me and and imagine going to high school with fucking that shit like that would be a nightmare, dude. That's it like insane. Like it's it's such like, a nightmare. yeah, it sounds bananas. Because whatever like, you said is now frozen in time on the internet. So yeah. you go back to school on Monday after saying some stupid shit on Saturday. Yeah, everybody saw it, dude. It's insane, dude. Everybody just, saw your stupid joke. You're like, fuck. And then it's like that creates more uh, clout chasing. You know? Yeah, yeah, that too. Like, that's that's the main thing. Everyone's trying to get clout. That's the snowball like, effect, though, is how it, it ends up in physical reality. What what happens to a person because of what happened in a virtual reality? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's gonna just it, it tur- or or the clout chasing thing too. It's it. I gotta. It's that um, Black Mirror episode where everybody's got a social uh, score yeah the social score oh yeah where yeah. you're being you get you got a uh fucking yelp review on you as a person <laughs> that everybody can see you know and i gotta keep my number up dude because i don't want people to think this this or that you know that's pretty out of its time that's pretty much i mean i know that certain countries have already started to do that it's insane dude like, i know social it's, score. <laughs> it's like your credit score oh, and then like socially how are you like from one to a hundred how sick are you dude <laughs> if you guys seen that episode there's that one dude who nobody wants to be around he's like trying to help everybody bring everybody coffee and shit just like i'm not taking your fucking coffee dude. you got a fucking 3.8 dude <laughs> oh my god it's like i'm not talking about this fucking th- this three th- three year dude i'm not dealing with three years dude or two years. um anyways let's get on the uh Let's get on the path. We're going to talk about um, the sports path. the whole time, right? Let's, let's talk about, uh, <laughs> yeah, Keenan Allen to the Bears. We'll yeah, the, the, yeah. The and uh, Mike Williams to the Chiefs. Um, so, uh, Marquise sorry, Brown. I'm a, I'm a humongous Chiefs fan. So, um, You know that, right, Di? I probably bitched about the Chiefs a bunch back when we were touring back. They sucked ass, and I was still repping them hard. And you I know. don't think I was that insane about football when we toured. 
uh, it was after the touring where I needed to fill the void of touring. And <laughs> that's when fantasy really oh, destroyed yeah. my life. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, dude. <laughs> I remember like ripping Speaking on fantasy when I was younger. Fantasy. I was like, "Fuck fantasy!" It was so fucking lit. like in two thousand six or five. I was like, "Shit's fucking dumb, dude. Why would you ever like fantasy? I'm not trying to put fantasy sports. I want to watch sports." And then um, my company at the time I was working for, they're like, "You want to join the league?" And I was like, "Whatever, I'll check it out." <laughs> and I was like, yeah. "What the, the fuck is going?" <laughs> I was like, just yeah. on it, like, "I got a waiver wire. Okay, I got to sit this guy. I got you know, like, and just like." I'm, I won this year. I won. It's a I won conspiracy, dude. Year. Oh fuck yeah! The and fantasy, the fantasy the brought in the people that aren't even into football as much as you guys are. Dude, there was and... one girl that literally from our company that picked the cutest players and won <laughs> the fucking thing. And I was like, <laughs> dude, That's how it works, like, man. I know it's like it's shit on all of our like fandom. We were just like, no, nah, dude, he's not gonna do the well. This it's like, no, he's cuter, so he's gonna put him in and just wins. That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> Good strategy. I know, right? Strategy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, I, got, I guess it's still subjective. I got to find out who's cute to me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he might not be the same. I don't know, cute man. Guy. Tom Brady was a hot piece of ass in his time. <laughs> she had she had Tom Brady. She had Tom Brady. I forget who what other like uh other cute players there were. I'm not I'm not up on the cuteness of NFL players, but uh Yeah, you are. Don't fucking lie, dude. No, I mean, Tom Brady's the only one I can think of. That's like the cute one, right? It's like there's only one. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. I'm sure there's plenty of cute guys, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We go just go into the podcast yeah. talking about cute guys in the NFL. Dude, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna on, let me pull this up. Real it's quick. gonna be the first time yeah. we watch our YouTube subscribers go down. Hot, <laughs> hot NFL players. Hot yeah. NFL players. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, the dead curve. Jimmy Garoppolo. Not surprising. Oh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, not yeah. surprising. Odell Beckham, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aaron All right, let's Rogers. talk about you. Let's Aaron talk Rogers. about you, cute dudes, for a little bit, dude. Let's <laughs> let's get into your history. Tell us about. Uh, well, Justin, have you been around the longest, right? Dude, day one, been, man. Justin's been around before I was born, man. Damn, Shit, dude. Is he older than you. <laughs> Killing it, bro. So, Danny, <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the mic right in front of Justin's face. I want to hear his story a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh man. Um. Talk about childhood, dude. What was it like uh, growing up? Where'd you grow up? Uh, creative people in your life. What were your parents listening to? All seven questions that I just asked you right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where do we start? Um, well, I basically grew up in South Carolina. Um, very small town um, called Bennettsville, South Carolina. Um, I went to school there. Um, and I, that's when I started getting into like, I started, I think it all started with like, I, I started listening to Nirvana, like a lot of grunge shit. And then that trickled into like underground grunge shit, like mud honey and stuff like that. Nice. Hell yeah. So we, and we then um, Casey here, he'd be fucking all over the grunge shit right now. Yeah. I mean, I still listen to a lot of that shit too, but, um, me too, me too. Definitely. What, yeah. were you, what, were, what were your parents listening to? Like, what, what was like influencing you back then? As far as like as a child, what, what was like? Uh, that's kind of like what normal Anthony's question usually is. Is like, what was in the household? What was being listened to before you? Like, before you even cared about music, what was something that like made you care? I got to think about that one. Uh, my mom listened to like a lot of oldies, and you know, just like <laughs> she listened to like a lot of like shag music. Um, you know, shag. Like, yeah, dude, it's like, uh, it's from, uh, so basically like in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, um, you know, she actually goes there often and um, it's it's called, I don't, I don't know, you have to like Google it, but it's some weird shit. But um, anyways, what's, what's the core, what's like the, ba like the basis of it though? Like we're, I don't, I don't really know much about it. I just know that when I hear it, it's like, ugh. Um, so she was listening to like a lot of that stuff, and um, I, got, like, I know when like, your mom this, dude. listens gotta... to Shag, you're like, fuck, dude, I know it's Shag from fucking Austin Towers. Shag <laughs> again, mom, yeah, it's like, I don't want to hear this. Um, but um, she would listen to like you know, I remember hearing like you know, um, <coughs> like things like Madonna, uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah, 
Prince, all that stuff. Uh, she was into like a lot of Motown stuff too. Um, Hell yeah. Which is, uh, you know, there's some really good stuff. Um, oh, I, I appreciate it a lot more now than I did back then because I was trying to be all rebellious and shit and be like, ah, it sucks. It's yeah, wild. we go through that, but nah, I uh, I agree, dude. My, my parents had listened to doo-wop and Motown stuff that, yeah. that I, I remember liking as a child. Then I went through my, you know, rebellious phase and then came back to it and realized, like, n- actually, no, that stuff's really good. And it, you know, again, nostalgia gives you that gives you that uh, time machine effect where you can kind of almost, you know, feel what it was like to be that six year old listening to Otis Redding or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, that shit's awesome. But um, then um, so she, uh, I was raised by a single mom, so um, I didn't have a father figure in my life. And, uh, you know, she always kind of tried to, you know, fill that void. And um, Mm -hmm. she ended up, um, you know, dating this one dude um, who played guitar and he played in a country band. And Mm. I listened to a ton of that shit back then. Um, But I hated it. I like (laughs) it. It's the same deal. I I actually like some of it now. Um, I was able to pick some of it apart and, you know, but what year was this, do you think? What year around? Oh man, I was in, I want to say this is like 94, 95, mm, yeah. something like that. Young country. Yeah. Nineties country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, he got me my first guitar. Um, and his, uh, his son, they, so they never got married, but I always looked at, you know, his son is like, you know, my brother, cause we kind of grew up, we lived in the same house. Um, they just never got married. And then this went on for years and, um, him and I started listening to like, you know, Nirvana, Green Day, um, you know, all that stuff, Bush, uh, yeah. and then, then shit started getting heavier and, you know, you'd start listening like Metallica, you know, the cranking the black album. I remember taking that to like, um, music class and it was so fucking awkward. Um, cause every, you've got to like, bring in your own music. And I, I think I brought like, uh, uh was it wherever i may roam or something and mm-hmm. um and, and it was like fifth or sixth grade yeah. and uh you know i started listening to that stuff and i ended up starting my first band in like i think it was like 96 or something um and I so you're playing you're playing guitar though you were so you had a guitar and you were barely yeah i mean i was i was able to like once i like once I figured out the power cord, I was like, Oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. So <laughs> let's ju- before we get to the band in 96, which wh- what year were you born, Justin? 84. So okay. I just oh, the board, shout out exact me too. same age, dude. Shout out 84, dude. Danny, how old are you? 35. Oh, Fucking yeah, young piece of shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Call that young. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, all right. So 84. Yeah. We're on the exact same timeline then dude um we before we get into yeah we want to get into what was can you rem, uh, you're probably gonna definitely remember it the moment that you decided you wanted to play an instrument you know and and what was the driving force behind it was there a a, a band yeah like a song that you just had to learn you you heard it and I got to be able to play it and then how how did you acquire the guitar and all that stuff yeah so um it had to be like I was really obsessed with Nirvana um so that would have to be the one that got me wanting to learn guitar um weird story I remember um my buddy um he back back then I didn't have a computer or anything um and he had a computer and I was like yo like you can like look up all this shit on the computer. You can get tabs and stuff. And like, I remember trading him some kind of guitar pedal for these Nirvana tabs. And he like printed out this fucking stack of fucking Nirvana tabs for me. And, um, shout out Andy. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he printed out all these like tabs and like, I was like reading guitar world magazine and stuff like that. So I started like finding other bands, you know, like Soundgarden and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what got me like, you know kind of obsessed um, did you punch all the tabs with the three 
hole punch so you nah, dude. In a nirvana just a binder stack. and put it on your bookshelf with all your encyclopedias and stuff. Nah, it was, it was just this <laughs> this like messy stack man and it was all out of order and whatever but um and then i tried to learn a lot of it by ear which you know isn't hard but back then it was because you know you don't have a trained ear unless you're like some prodigy but um mm-hmm. yeah so um but yeah my first guitar was a pv tracer i remember it was like this lime green fucking uh pv tracer is made in the usa which is cool um but it had like this like paint splatter and i thought like since it was bought used i thought someone did that um but it was actually like a stock color and i've actually seen a few of them in the wild because i'm always like gear hunting so um i still haven't bought one yet but i think i I think i found it i found the one you're talking about because i'm a a gear nerd too oh yeah and when you when you said that i was like all right was it this one it was like a double cutaway. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Shut and dude, up, dude. Dude, that was my first electric guitar. Um, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Fucking oh, yeah. The yeah, I gotta, I gotta find through with that, dude. That was fast. Four twenty five. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean it's USA made too. So, oh yeah. Um, but I remember I um, I I I put uh, seek and destroy on the fucking fretboard, like the maple fretboard. I like mm. like carved it in there with like a pen. Yeah. So it looks yeah. so fucking bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, a quick, was, quick yeah. side story, like of an embarrassing move like that. I remember going uh, first first day of high school. I was like, corn, corn was just it. That was all that I gave a shit about. And follow the leader had just come out. I think uh, oh, just god. came out for a little while. And I, <laughs> dude, this is so bad. I, I, I've told it maybe once or twice on here. But for my, uh, I had a Jansport black backpack, and I had the, the kind of like leather bottom. And mm-hmm. I just got, I got a fucking sharp. I got, I got a sharpie, dude, and just went. I just wrote Joel Corner for my name <laughs> with the K, with K, and all the R's were backwards R's. And I was like, I walk into school, like, dude, I'm gonna make a fucking impact on this. And and my buddies were just like, Joel Corner. And I was like, Dad. Next day, I was like, Dad, we need a new backpack, dude. I fucked up. <laughs> I, made a dude, I thought I was so sick. I was so confident. I was so amazing. into corn that I was like, dude, this is gonna be fucking the hit dude when i walk into high school i was gonna be like damn like not even understanding the outside perspective of what could be i was like this is what i am dude no yeah. one you can't make fun of this dude, no. dude, dude i had that leather... cassette tape Hell oh yeah, fuck dude. yeah yeah no definitely dude, I was you, hit the, with you hit the <laughs> yeah. bottom of a jam sport with a sharpie and you hit the uh colored section with the white out dude that's what you do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you already using the tools that are already in there to just graffiti your own backpack so we yeah. had no instagram or anything to like know what was cool or not cool so we're just like whatever dude right. just take a chance <laughs> take a chance dude. joel <laughs> corner dude i got and and you're going to bed at night like oh dude yeah dude i i think it's gonna be sick dude i think that- <laughs> <laughs> so much time on it <laughs> okay, <wait to> get- <laughs> but yeah same thing with like the, the, the drawing on the fretboard you're like it was gonna be fucking sick dude like no one's even gonna know what hit him when they see this <laughs> yeah i was so like i was so bummed out like five yeah. weeks later like god i look stupid <laughs> <laughs> it's a move dude it's a move hell yeah all right so then all right so you're you're hit you're playing the nirvana was nirvana was the first band that you played then or learned and it was yeah, the power as far chords, as i can remember yeah, yeah just yeah. whatever i could riff with some power chords and that was the one so um hell yeah you know. but uh yeah i mean i learned i started learning like you know Soundgarden and you know all Fuck that yeah. stuff so no i was um, super into that too Soundgarden's guitar player and their drummer was severely underrated how insane they are they're great musicians man you know i would have these guitar worlds and it's like all these like weird tunings like kim mm-hmm. Taylor had all these weird tunings and i was weird like open oh, tunings I'm trying to tune my guitar and it's like all buzzing and like it's like fuck this like same with like pearl jam <laughs> and stuff it's like sick. they have like they have like seven tunings it's like sick dude i wanted to learn your song but I'm not gonna tune to like all, all my strings to G or whatever the fuck you're doing. Like, I'm... <laughs> Just for this song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was like obsessed with that. And then like, you know, Metallica, corn, stuff like that. I started like, you know, it was like that stepping stone. When did you meet when did you meet somebody who had uh like minded uh drive for metal? Um so it was a few different people in like in the in the neighborhood there was this one dude um and i don't even really 
uh, remember this like full story, but like my buddy, uh, Dustin, who I grew up with, um, who was like a brother to me, uh, him and I, you know, basically like we were like moshing to like, you know, like green day and stuff like, you know, just jumping around like cause we, what we saw on MTV. So, yeah. <laughs> but like, there's this dude in the neighborhood. Um, and I don't even know, like he was like way older than us. And, and I don't know like the full story, but I remember him like letting us like borrow these like cassette tapes. And mm. we like, we got like fucking like Pantera's uh, vulgar. Um, and he let, he let me borrow like, um, I'm trying to think, uh, Sepultura, uh, Chaos AD. So yeah. like throws oh, yeah. and all that kind of shit. And I was like, yo, this is where it's at. So mm-hmm. totally. Um, I don't know. I just started like, I was like, I'm wanting more and more and more. And like, yeah, dude. and it's like, this speaks to me. Um, so it just kind of sparked something, dude. And, um, you know, I just kept trying to learn all those riffs and, uh, yeah, the rest is history. It just kind of, it kept getting more extreme, you know, as we do, um, just mm-hmm. trying to find that next thing, like a drug. <laughs> it yep. Is, it, I, I mean, it's, that's very frequent what we talk about, dude. It, it it is totally like a drug. Once you catch that that um, wavelength, you're just gonna keep going with it, dude. And uh, may the metal gods bless all the older generations that are passing down the relics through cassettes and CD. It, even just giving people names now for the internet, because that's all you got to do now is just type in a name. But dudes that were passing down the cds and cassettes even if it was just mixed tapes and all that stuff just giving the exposure to the younger generation coming up dude hell yeah yeah um and i remember uh specifically um i think i told danny the story uh but so i was in, in my first band and um this drummer uh his name was brennan um and I remember we were like just trying to jam, like just figuring it out, you know, making noise or whatever. And I went to um, his house to, you know, we were, we had like a little like room, like a little practice spot. And I remember his brother um, like was like away. And it was like this, like, it's like, where's your brother at, dude? Like, cause you'd always talk about his brother, but his brother was like away. Um, come to find out his brother was like, he like robbed some like convenience store or some shit. Oh, shit. Um, but like on one of our little breaks, um, we uh went to like his brother's room and saw his music and fucking morbid angels um domination was there and dude it was almost like i can't fucking listen to that this dude fucking right. like, shot somebody like he robbed like i, I was like this is I, this is too far <laughs> yeah. even without that backstory morbid angels always scary to the yeah and it was like, like and yeah. he was like yeah he loves all this like really like like you know death metal music and like it's crazy as fuck and I was like, oh shit. And I was like, Mind Danny, show your, your hat, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Represent. All day. <laughs> and shout, shout out, out uh, Naveen and Janie are in the chat from uh, Entheos. Oh, love you guys. Yeah. I saw that. I was just waiting for the time to give him the shout out, but you beat me, dude. Yeah. Love you guys. Um, love. I'm thank you for buying your goddamn wedding. Hopefully, you have a lot of alcohol. I'm I wasn't invited. Love you guys so much. <laughs> Chaney, thank yeah. you for Man, shouting why would out you be invited? Joni and, uh, <laughs> At one uh, podcast with Warforge, that was pretty sick. Oh, oh, what's yeah. over Joni again? Can you catch me up? I'm forgetting right now. It's just like my high school band. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Very, uh, very hard. To- <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, People, uh, I just you know, it's a band. <laughs> I say. Well, if they're if they're if they're name dropping, dude, I, it's a little more than a high school band, I guess, right? Nah, dude, just a high school band. Honestly, like, I mean, we we did some shit, but we never toured or anything. That's that's why I thought it was cool that she shouted us out because I'm like, dude, we never even really like did anything. It's pretty crazy. I'm that, saying but. this as somebody who doesn't tour, but does touring really make you a thing that somebody should pay attention to, or is it just the art? And I mean, and... I, I guess when you're 18 years old, you're not really. Thinking well, yeah, but I was just it, saying, you, know? you were talking, you said we didn't tour like that was a knock against you guys. And I don't think that as an artist, you don't even have to leave your studio if you don't have to. Are True. you, are you on a, are you on a, uh, we're on the YouTubes. Oh, I'm looking we got a, 
<laughs> I mean, I guess like our uh, our highlight is a music video um, where we did uh, subject to inanimate dream. Yeah, that was like my fucking great idea of uh, doing a music, a music video in a wrestling ring. Oh, I like, see that. No, I we it. basically rented out a wrestling ring and uh, beat the shit out of each other for like a couple hours. <laughs> 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 What's what the fuck? <laughs> I got a mute for you to listen to it. And now I give you. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Yep. Okay. A uh, Johnny. Early. Lot of these massacre worship. That's fucking red, dude. <laughs> I was just about to say, like, just a high school band, dude. I was in a new metal band that was <laughs> telling everybody I was empty inside. You know, and you guys are in Beneath the Massacre. I'm sorry, I guess this is a high school band. This is so <laughs> <laughs> fucking music videos with fucking people wrestling and shit. I, I'm like out of your time. Printing out stickers on uh, at Kinko's to try and sell them for a dollar to go pay to play at a fucking place in Brisbane, dude. With oh, shitty dude. songs. <laughs> All right, that was rad, dude. Let's we're gonna get into that more on your uh, side of things, Danny. But let's just get back onto Justin's thing real quick, so. He, where were we left off? I'm lost. I'm lost. I just, Morbid I smoked, Angel. I smoked marijuana. Morbid Angel. Yeah. Robberies. Uh, home invasions. Robberies. Home invasions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, basically, you know, listen to that record, Domination, and that just changed everything. To this yeah, day, dude. too. Like, I oh, mean, totally. Still the best, um, you know, with Morbid Angel, and it's definitely one of my favorite Favorite Very band similar band. path for me too. The, you're talking about like the Corn Metallica, then going to like Pantera, Sepultura. Was that was a, that was, and then went going to Slayer. It was like Sepultura, Chaos ID. I remember getting that album, freaking Hell out yeah. and going and learning, uh, going to a guy in Santa Cruz that just taught you how to play the songs from CDs. That's all he did. He didn't. He wasn't like no guitar lessons. He's all, what do you want to learn how to play? And just would tab it out for you and write it down and um, walk and was obviously one of the first ones and then um propaganda. territory pr propaganda oh, all, yeah. all those songs yeah. um were right up there for the second or third and i was just sitting there like fucking working i, I should remember actually the last lesson i i got necrophagist like on a burn seat like a before they got signed or anything like a really early version of it and i gave it to him and i left it there and i ran into him about 15 years later and he's like Dude, I'm showing that to all my guitar students. It's like the sickest thing ever. <laughs> like he was like, you know, just brain. I was like, oh, that's where my CD is. Fuck, dude. But at the time, we were like, you know, it's already streaming stuff at that time. But um, yeah, that was like the same path though. That kind of like it was like, what's more crazy? What's more crazy? And then it was Morbid Angel Gateways to Annihilation, and then it mm -hmm. was like fucking Deicide and you know, Kill the Christian and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I like I like pissing people off with that. At, like. At uh, like pool halls and just throwing on killed Christians. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got cowboy hats on, just be like, it's all killed Christian. And like, <laughs> it's like, it's brought me such pleasure that I like would just, that was like my favorite thing to do. Well, but yeah, that was kind of the same path of like, what's, what's gnarlier? What's gnarlier? What's Justin, gnarlier? what was, uh, what was your mom doing uh, outside of this? Was she looking in, being like, hmm, he's listening Shh. to kind of extreme music? 
yeah she did not like that stuff and yeah. you know when she found out like Kurt Cobain killed himself and like Ooh, all this yeah. stuff and like because she would like find out about it like years later and it's like I don't want you listening to, like Marilyn Manson like that's the devil and you know all this stuff and I was like yeah it's cool like I'm gonna go listen to this now and you know and <laughs> rebel and <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Manson is probably CDs. more the devil than Glenn Benton dude I'm, yeah one of the yeah. only CDs my dad broke when I was a kid was like I, I came home with a member Mace from Puff Daddy and Mace yeah like I, I came home with Mace and um anti what's it uh anti-christian what's the the big Marilyn Manson album the anti-christ anti superstar yeah, I came up with those two things, and my dad found them. I was just all, nope, not these two, but any other Death Metal you want to listen to is fine. Yeah, similar situation <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> We're on the same wavelength for sure, but exactly. Um, yeah, and I actually was like in the hip hop shit too. Obviously, like Wu Tang mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, oh yeah. And I got into. I remember. Um, it's funny you mentioned that about my mom. Like, she didn't like me listening to stuff, but like. There was this um there was a spot called dots music in bennettsville south carolina where i would get uh you know cds and cassettes and she would have to sometimes come in to um like sign off on me getting like parental advisory shit. Yeah. and i remember specifically getting grave diggers six feet deep hell um, yeah and dude. she had to come in <laughs> and the, 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 this old it's lady was like sign yeah she was That's like awesome. are, you, are you are you sure like uh he's good to have this she was like yeah he's he's a good kid he you know he he, he he's fine yeah. so like she was supportive but like she also like wasn't about it you know at the same yeah, time yeah, 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 yeah. but she was cool so um i think that that's kind of my and not to get into like a deep parent thing but you kind of have to have that level of i want you to know that i might not agree with this but i'm gonna let you experience it and make your own decision yeah and, oh, yeah you know yep. and and uh any somewhat I, I shouldn't say you know it's just somebody who's got some a parent who lets their kid experience things for what they are and then you know decide oh i'm still going to continue with listening to this knowing that it's crazy that that's the smart part for the child when they realize they can experience something that's totally in, insane or or you know a, a horror movie is crazy and you can still be like texas chainsaw like leatherface is dope and i think that that's the point where you're like i they can attach themselves to it as art and then realize that obviously in, in real life, that's a different thing. The album grave dig is six feet deep that you were just mentioning is my 12 year old. If I walked in and he was listening to it without my introducing it to him, <laughs> I would be like, we immediately need to sit down and just talk <laughs> real quick, dude. I need to not let that album get ahead of me. I need to, at least just give you an introduction to this is what you're going to experience if you go into hip hop and listen to these guys talk about these things they're all not really doing these things you know it's it's just like watching a movie exactly. some of them may might be doing it but yeah you get some outliers <laughs> like Definitely oh shit this is exactly what i'm doing this is what i want to do just we're making <laughs> they got them themselves to a point where they're just making money dude that's it dude. that was such a fucking revelation for me though to talk about when you know death metal and people people talk about the lyrics and stuff like that and, and all these things and i'd be like my i never had the rebuttal until like maybe five or six years ago where i was like dude it's like a fucking horror movie like we watched those and you don't think that those actors that you give them Oscars and shit, you're not you're not thinking like, oh, they're gonna be those people and kill people in real life. It's like, no, it's a fucking it's a it's basically a form of art just you know, portraying a story or something. It's not anything to do with what they'll do in real life. Like it's it's such a fucking stress reliever too. And I see a lot of like people nowadays, and especially like the younger generation, they're almost using like aggressive music as like a it's therapy, dude. It's like you get like, and it's legit. I think it's, if we're going to find the future. It's legitimate therapy. It's like legitimate getting your anger out and stuff. And, and you know, 
all you guys, every death metal, the gnarliest death metal bands we've had on here are the nice, nicest guys that we've ever had. You know, it's like people that are, have this like output and they have this way to kind of like express themselves in a certain way. They have their negative outlet and they just get it out and then they're chill as fuck. It's like, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be more research later on. I have a hundred percent. I know it's gonna be a fact that's gonna happen. But um, anyway, so I'm rambling. And I, uh, no, I, I agree. I completely agree. It's it's kind of cliche where they like compare metal to classical music, where like a lot of it stems from depression or just like feeling shitty, and and then you write that kind of music. I mean, dude, like what what better kind of music that expresses that like visceral feeling than or that just intensity than metal, man. I mean, like, sure, you can write a fucking sad, like, R&B song, but it's not going to have the same effect. That, like, I don't know, at least for me, like, I need that, like, intensity, you know, like that raw emotion. And it's no, like a valid yeah. emotion, man. Like, it's a human emotion, you know? Yeah. Well, with working out, everybody feel, you know, people who work out consistently will say that they are just in a better mood most of the the day because they work out and they exert all their shit while they're at the gym or out mm -hmm. for a run or whatever they do to just blow off the steam you know um they have a better you know sense of just regular more positive and well if you're doing that physically and you get that feeling there's got to be a mental like version of that yeah which, and and metal is a opportunity to mentally exert yourself mm -hmm. to where you're weeding out or pushing off that steam that pressure that's happening mentally you can use metal as you know a temporary relief from whatever is bullshit that's going on you know, everybody's got their bullshit. And then if you find it to be a, a, a good way to blow off mental steam and you find your way in that, then you can also have fun with it and start to get crazy with it and find the, the technical ways of blowing off the steam. How, how am I going to, you know, get the most out of this listening experience cabinet from spawn of possession dude just, <laughs> you know? six segue <laughs> that's my favorite death metal album so i mean thank, thank uh, you for yeah. bringing that up if you, if you want to fucking <laughs> intricately blow off steam you go fucking throw that bitch on dude you know <laughs> no that's true though it's definitely true with the uh you know I, I i hope they do some more research on it and it's it definitely feels like you know, I get goosebumps over certain things and I'm having a bad day or there's times where I'll be like in a rut and then a certain song will just bring me completely out of the rut. Like I'm stoked. Yeah. It's you know, a vacation, like, guys. It's a yeah. vacation. Mental and, vacation. Yeah. And maybe like, again, back to Cabinet. Cabinet is climbing Mount Everest on vacation. It's fucking uh, skydiving, you know? On a practice, fucking, fuck yeah. Or, or I know. Any, doing a sick scuba dive out in fucking Hawaii doing and seeing sharks that's spawn of possession dude you know <laughs> but yeah I totally agree um I've battled depression anxiety you know for my entire mm -hmm. life and nothing is more like therapeutic than you know music to me and I know it's like cliche but like I mean it'll be like I can put on like DSI and like just be chill as fuck you know yeah. Yeah. And cross, like zen it's like you zen out to that's the shit dude. <laughs> that's what ian made a good point right here because he said like country music shows have mad fights <laughs> like it's you know it's, it's, it's like it's like certain, yeah. certain genres like uh that are supposed to be like chill or like fun and whatever like there's still and that then they can blame it on the alcohol game. but we all get wasted at metal shows too and nobody wants to punch each other we we might want to run into each other in a circle pit but if we knock yeah. each other over we're gonna be like oh fuck dude my bad and we're gonna pick each other up and yeah yeah you know that's a camaraderie of, of liking such a kind of a unique style of music and right. once you get it and i think that's why we go down these rabbit holes of like what's more extreme what's more extreme it's because like it's it, just going back to the drug thing it's like this thing works for us <laughs> this like <laughs> this is hitting the spot for us like what's yeah. 
what's the what's the more what's the more uh high grade of this what's you know like, <laughs> like what's the fucking shit that hits harder dude let's get and, that uh, fish scale dude yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah no it's it's a trip I, I you know i feel like there'll be, there'll be more research on it later hopefully but um it's good to see metal doing good in a good place right now but uh Let's get back to uh, Justin's story. So you like Metallica or something? Right? <laughs> um, that's an old joke on here. But uh, no, so you're getting there. So you start to play your uh, PV uh, guitar, starting to jam with people. And like, what were you playing? Were you, were you When you first jammed with a drummer and a singer, and what were you guys putting out? Were you guys covering? Or were you guys writing songs? Um, we had, I basically, I never like really covered uh anything ever um other than like you know i learned like those early like grunge songs but like it was all like um originals mm -hmm. um and then um somehow i ended up on bass i don't know how that happened but i ended up on bass because i guess because this other dude was it was like way better at guitar um and he like introduced me to like shit like the beatles um nice and i fucking hated it at first um because you know i was all about corn and you know all that yeah stuff. yeah <laughs> Joel Joel <Corner>. <laughs> yeah but Joel then it was corn. like but he liked that he liked corn and, and manson and, and all this stuff and like he was like nah but check it out like you got to listen to the white album and you got to listen to this one and it's like all right man i'll give it a chance and i've always been like you know someone with an open mind so like i gave it a chance and finally you know i was like damn this shit's sick all this melody stuff and um you know so I, I started you know respecting that a little more and um but yeah so i guess like you know hip-hop uh you know death metal grunge i was listening to everything at that point um you know just kind of whatever whatever hit and um yeah i mean after that like we didn't really do anything like we didn't you know plenty shows anywhere it was just kind of like just jamming trying to figure it out but um yeah pv tracer uh through a big muff uh one of those old russian green yep. big muffs but it came in the wooden box that was my first uh distortion pedal um which wasn't when really that, distortion. When, did, when did metal zone hit your life dude <laughs> <laughs> um probably later it was later on actually um you know i've i've had literally like i feel like every old pedal like that i, I actually wonder, had the i had the dod grunge like the original okay i had that oh, too shit. i had that too yeah, dude, I those things are worth a lot of money now. Percentage of metal guitarists have owned a metal zone. <laughs> I I want to say. I think you have to have have. It's got to be high nine. Dude, I had mid nineties. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be mid nineties. As, as bad as they sounded, like through a combo amp, they actually can sound pretty sick though. I don't yeah, know if, if you're like, not playing live to to a bunch of people, like for your just in your room and just jamming and like. Yeah. scoop those mids and those that thing and just be like <laughs> just be like bassy chunks like that it, it, it did yeah. a great job but then like you're like whatever dude i'm gonna get a fucking mesa and then like run it <laughs> through this <laughs> i mean even though actually i think um i think cryptopsy that used to be their setup they used to go yeah metal zone into the clean in the back and, and then fucking run a metal zone through a fucking the tube clean channel of a mesa and it sounded great so there those have been like a shit on pedal but i think they're kind of an iconic pedal like there's a, a joke behind them and there's also like people that have still used them and got good sounds out of them so that's yeah, cannibal corpse right. uh use it as a boost um yep we did sounds of the underground with them and i was like is that a fucking metal zone dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, now like, my, my drop uh, d metal zone plus power chords equals metal this uh, is a part of my every <laughs> every uh uh yeah. pedal uh pedal does setup it I actually have. I a, do a fart <laughs> it does but they just it just basically like you hit a chord it just makes a fart noise it, it makes it more anything. rubbery it, really, it does no it doesn't re react to any kind of chord that you're doing or any kind of position you're in it's just like it's uh, all, like triggering like, a sample a, yeah it's a sample it's a small like fart get, you got a cheaper version yeah, of like just pushing the fart. buttons basically <laughs> yeah. there's wet uh, like <laughs> there's wet and dry and then there's <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious dude it yeah. just turns your guitar into a button that's all it yeah does. yeah it's just... it's just like in between songs just drop a fart you know just not even worry about it just yeah you know, let them deal with it but uh <laughs> no i mean no gear i mean you're getting into like gear stuff and like you feel like kind of the same person as me with just the gear trading back like especially in the early 2000s and stuff like going back and, and still nowadays but I've kind of left to the digital realm, you know, just so I don't have to deal with it because I don't 
also space is an issue and um there's a lot of things but uh with gear and stuff it's it's a it's a problem it's you know it's almost like how we did with metal where we first started off with this band what's crazier what's crazier what's crazier it's like let's sell this and get this let's get this and this and it's like oh yeah i haven't stopped doing that i do it <laughs> constantly and i i don't discriminate uh digital i like it all so yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. big problem because like I yeah. Have, like, oh, yeah. a mountain of pedals over here and then i got a kemper over here and then you know it's just like definitely it's a problem no, I guess for sure my uh old drummer or a uh, drummer buddy i used to live with he was in that band of stratosphere and a bunch of all the cool bands but i used to have like musicians friends and stuff and sweet waters in the bathroom and he'd, he's all oh you got some good shit porn in there <laughs> he used to call it shit porn. <laughs> 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 I was like, that's like for guitar players and and just gear nerds like i could just sit there and just like come up with like 20 ideas of things i need to buy that's it, it becomes quite expensive and when you start building relationships with people it's not the best moves but uh <laughs> but yeah That's so going on from th going on from then so you uh were jamming and like so when did you start like doing metal projects and doing so like starting playing out and stuff like that um so once i hit um i guess it was like late middle school um i just i decided just to like stop playing guitar um I, so i took some time off from that i just like wasn't interested anymore you know like you're at, you know you're that age you're just kind of like discovering things and everything's changing mm -hmm. and you know um so i i took you know probably a few years off and i moved around a lot so um you know i like this the friends that i grew up with i didn't have you know those same friends in the same town so I just kind of gave up um and i guess uh when i i ended up moving to a, a town called florence south carolina um i want to say in probably like 2000 or something like that um and i went to this new high school and i didn't know anyone and it was like awful i fucking yes, i hated it yeah i was like uh and i just i started like getting like fucking panic attacks and like you know like anxiety like crazy um to where i couldn't like go to school sometimes and it was it just got really bad yeah. um but uh i met a couple of friends um and one of them uh you know was into like slayer and shit and um uh, he uh, he's a good friend to this day, but um, he introduced me to some other cats that like you know played like metal in, in the area, and um, I kind I ended up joining their band, um, and we had like a few bands after that and different projects, and that's kind of where through the eyes started from those you know <clears throat> projects. Uh, did that uh, did that relieve some of that stress and anxiety that you were feeling? For you sure, those guys, yeah. Yeah, it gave me like a little more confidence and, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, because I have no friends at this new school and, you know, I don't know anyone in this town. And I don't know, it was like uh, just kind of a, almost like a culture shock for me because it was like I, I went from knowing everyone to like knowing no one. And yeah. um, I had given up on guitar for a while and then I kind of brought it back and, you know, it kind of gave me a little sense of hope there. So, totally. um, but yeah, like, you know, these these guys were like, I remember um, uh, uh, when we um, first started jamming, uh, these guys, they were in a band called Maggot Christ. And uh, mm. I was like, damn, uh, that shit's hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, but, but when I listened to them, it was like, it was, it was, I was like, it's got to be like, you know, some extreme shit. But it wasn't. It was like a little more melodic metal. Yeah. Um, and that's when I started like, you know getting into bands like at the gates and and things like that um you know that brought the melodic side to it and i was like obsessed with at the gates and flames oh yeah uh, yeah. yeah so that kind of opened that gateway um and uh you know they they um they were like yeah we we're, we were trying to sound like you know this 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 uh local i guess it wouldn't be local but because they were from north carolina but they were mentioning like prayer for cleansing um and i was like prayer for cleansing what's that so then i heard them and i was like it's it was kind of like melodic but it had like you know breakdowns and you know hardcore parts mm -hmm, here and there mm -hmm. and i was just like never heard anything like that that would blend you know those heavier parts with you know you know some you know melodic metal riffs and i was just that like, is right. so funny that's like so, so slayer for me too when i hit slayer i was like showing everyone slayer then i got a little bit cannibal corpse and then um my friends i was hanging out with showed me poison the well that was like but that was like early po it was opposite of december maybe had just come out 
Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, what's this? Like, they're doing this, like, the heavy thing. Like, what's up with the heavy thing? <laughs> they weren't called breakdowns back then. No one called them breakdowns. They yeah. were just heavy parts. And I was like, these heavy parts are fucking sick. Like, and they, like, look more like me. I don't have long hair. Like, I'm not, like, you know, I wasn't fitting into the mold of, of metal and stuff. And I was kind of that rift of, or that kind of bridge between what became metalcore, deathcore, everything. And and seeing that happen like right in front of my eyes and going like this shit that unearthed. I remember hearing stings of consciousness and going mm-hmm. like, who the fuck are these guys? I was like ninety nine or or yeah. two thousand when that album came out, and I was like, these guys shred and they're heavier than every metal band I know. You know, it's like and seeing that kind of cross and they're kind of that young style like dressed like you know they don't didn't have big beers or just kind of just like hello we're here for the job interview but uh but no but they shredded their balls off so it was like what the fuck you know it's like you can this is a new style of things so meeting that slayer going from kind of that new style and what it obviously became something humongous but at the time it was like whoa what's going yeah on we were kind of seeing that like because it was like it was real eye-opening too because you know, we saw like prayer for cleansing. And then um, in North Carolina, um, there were a lot more bands than there were in South Carolina. There was like not many at all. Um, but I saw bands like uh, Aria and then um, Azazel and and all these like crazy bands like in, in that scene back then. And they were blending like, you know, metal and hardcore. And I wasn't really into hardcore, but I was mm-hmm. super into metal. But I really liked when they were blending the two together. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, the guys that I was jamming with when Through the Eyes started, um, a lot of them were into, you know, a lot of extreme death metal as well. So they they uh, just fed that uh, to me more and, like, introduced me to, like, Deeds of Flesh. Um, I nice. remember Path of the Weakening. I was like, yo, this is the <laughs> hardest shit ever. <laughs> um, so I'm listening to, you know, like, this metalcore shit that, like, no one really knows is, like, actually, like, metalcore. And then... Uh, then uh boom i'm listening to deeds of flesh and and yeah and all that stuff and cannibal corpse and you know morbid from way back when and uh yeah it was just like a culmination of all that i guess really influenced our sound um because you know death core didn't exist at all then so uh, they used to kind of like mix up when i was younger it was i mean at that time in like the early 2000s and stuff it was like hardcore they would say hardcore, but it, that hardcore was Poison the Well, like mm. all, like all like all these bands. But it also was like there's hardcore punk well, <laughs> and all these other things. Metal and they core, just, metal core, metal core wasn't a wasn't a wasn't a term. Well, back, back then. then it was metallic hardcore. <laughs> yeah. <That's okay>. Remember <laughs> that term? <laughs> <laughs> it's like metal. It's like a blackened death metal. It's like, <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah it's, it was. It I mean, people used to just call like unearth and all these bands are like, oh, it's a hardcore band. It's yeah, a hard, it's a hardcore band or. Beneath Masker came out and I was like, oh, it's a cool hardcore band that came out. <laughs> and I was like, like what we have to start. I mean, that's where subgenres people bitch about them, but that's where they kind of need to come into play a little bit because yeah, they yeah. have they have a lot of the they they touch on a lot of the the genres, you know. But yeah, I had this friend that was um, you know, like you remember the Napster days downloading MP3s and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my friends, uh, he he had like one of those like he had like access to these FTP sites. So he would always just download so much shit and just send it all to me. me. Yeah. And it would like leave, you know, the 56 K modem, just leave it on and like, just download wake up in the morning, get an album. You're like, fuck <laughs> yeah. <it."> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then that was like, you know, that was a whole game changer for exploring music and stuff. Oh, like that. totally dude. There was a one called hotline. I, there was another one called, I forget, I forget what it was like a abbreviation of something, but yeah, once you like get led into their their hubs, there's like mm-hmm. hubs that you can get in. So once you got in, you had to meet requirements of ha- sharing a certain amount of music. Yeah, and then once you uh, got in, that. yeah, then you could just be like, boom, have access to everyone's libraries, and then you could search for stuff. And like, I'd be like, find a guy that like matches kind of your style, and you just be like, bam, bam, like album, 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 just like, and just wake up in the morning with like all this gold, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it was so sick. Watch a loop. <laughs> yeah exactly nowadays it's like uh what's this yeah and just, you just yeah. get it right away you know it's we like we were like you know, downloading for days and then burning it on a cd and dude. oh dude burning it to an mp3 dude. player after you just gave your computer aids like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like, again you can uh, you could 
compare that to drugs, dude. It's literally yeah. It's, yeah we're just like oh whatever. I got, I got a, We've been I got smoking flour for the <laughs> longest <laughs> time, and now all of a sudden you got the concentrate, dude. You had just got the hash. <laughs> level. I'm I'm so <laughs> glad that I got to experience that at least, like you know, like reading a magazine, going to the the, the back of the page, and like reading all the reviews, and that's how I found like animosity ion dissonance despised icon <laughs> Fuck like yeah. reading a fucking magazine dude and then you know going on limewire and downloading some shit or maybe not limewire at the time maybe that was a little but you know so dude i, I want to get animosity.hero.exe dude i want to download that album <laughs> <It's just funny. laughs> shout out shout out nate in the chat dude nate from anomalous ontogeny fame dude when you when I read that, I imagined you literally having to walk uphill in the snow both ways to download an album, dude. <laughs> that's pretty much that's our that's our, that's our barefoot in the snow story, though. You know, that's you had to walk up one mountain and download it and then climb down and go back up another one to go get whatever you downloaded on a different computer. <laughs> oh wow. Man. Uh, nowadays like when you want to download something like i you know i'm not a big periphery fan but they have that first album that was instrumental and uh, that was released for a little while and i remember like listening to that shout out to the vocalist of that album dude (laughs) um but i remember (laughs) listening to that and i was like dude this is fucking perfect they don't need a vocalist for this this is great the music expresses itself perfectly and um then they took everything off and they were like I wanted to listen to it like last week and I was like, I couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, I will pay someone 50 bucks for this fucking, for the MP3s for this. And I had to go back to Pirate Bay or whatever and like <laughs> try to try to like find it, like download a bunch of AIDS and then like try to like, <laughs> yeah. like try to like find it again. And I finally got it, but it was like, man, like getting back in that realm of like the LimeWire, like downloading shit. It's like nowadays, it's like, it's like, there's some technical fucking weird shit out there. So it's like you got to be careful on what you download. But um, no, I got it. And it's I got like the actual like like stems or something. It's like each file was like a almost a gig. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's like the most beautiful sounding thing ever. But um, but yeah, that's like getting back in that realm. And, and people are still doing the with the torrents and all that stuff. It's still kind of like a, a, a lifestyle people are living, <laughs> even though just nine ninety nine, no aids on your computer and you have fucking yeah. whatever you want you know which sucks because spotify doesn't really pay anyone but um we can get into that later what are you talking about but, uh, we, get, we get money what are you talking about like point whatever of a cent dude they cut they play? sent me like a, a cut in half penny every week dude <laughs> <laughs> what if you what if you got the actual piece of a penny that you're owed a week it show up in an envelope and it's just a little pebble of copper it's like that's what you get dude it's like that movie mafia where he like cuts the penny in half this is what (laughs) for squeezing olives into a (laughs) whatever the physical version of getting paid for yeah a spotify deal all right, All right we'll get, I have we'll, no idea where we're at, guys. No, we'll, we'll finish up <laughs> Justin and get to Danny. Um, so the inception of Deathcore, I think, is where we're the inception of Deathcore. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, you know, to, I mean, Animosity, all these bands that had like huge influence on this stuff, and um, you guys coming out too. I mean, so we can jump to was it starting through the Ezra Dead around that time? Yeah, we How started in two thousand three. Um, but we had like a death metal band called Evisceration that was just like a drum machine and um, mm-hmm. me and the old guitar player, uh, you know, so it kind of stemmed from that. We briefly did a band um, before that called Teller I Said Goodbye. It was really bad. Um, but uh, it, uh, I think it was, um, I, I want to say like we were kind of influenced by, because I think Between the Barrett and Me started in, was it like 01 or 02 or something mm-hmm. like that? Uh, and I heard that self title where they were blending, you know, all these styles. And I was, I like, fucking love that at record still to this day, dude. Yeah. I, I actually just bought that vinyl recently, <laughs> but, it's um, yeah, really that's good. Sick. yeah, it's a good vibe. Yeah. But, um, I remember seeing them, uh, at like new Brooklyn Tavern in Columbia, South Carolina back, you know, then. And I was just like, this is, this is it. This is fucking awesome. Um, 
So like I was real in influenced. So I went obviously start a band like that and didn't last very long. And then we started, um, you know, uh, wanted to blend kind of what we were doing before with, uh, you know, maggot Christ and stuff like that, where we, it was still melodic, but still death metal. But mm-hmm. then, you know, throw in those like heavier parts, um, back then, you know, we didn't call them really breakdowns. So, um, that, that was like the kind of the birth of the band. And, um, we were in South Carolina, so there weren't a ton of bands doing anything like that. Um, we kind of had to travel a lot to North Carolina, um, usually like a couple hours away to like play like Charlotte or Greensboro, or Winston-Salem, places like that to kind of, you know, get people to recognize us. Because anytime we, w- we actually played these like local shows in Florence um, and it was a place called the Cootie Hut. It was like a, v- a VFW and mm-hmm. just like a bunch of like crazy ass rednecks like fucking with fire pits and <laughs> this vfw building like everyone's just getting wasted and um, <laughs> there was probably like you know some underage drinking and all yeah. kinds of shit going on down there. There's and <laughs> allegedly <laughs> yes uh funny story the arsis uh played there we we somehow dragged arsis down to the cootie Whoa. hut um back in nice. the day oh yeah um, but yeah, there was like nothing in South Carolina, um, you know, really. So, um, yeah, I mean, I remember uh, the day we got um, on this website called hxcmp3.com. And I was like, dude, I fucking made it. Fucking made <laughs> yeah, it. that's those moments where you think you made it. I love that. <laughs> we were like on the front page of this like website that probably yeah. no one ever heard of. Yeah. But, um, but dude, we were listening to like, I remember um, All Shall Perish. Um mm-hmm. Because people are always like, who's the first deathcore band? And like to me, that was one of the first death yeah, I could agree there. I could agree yeah, with that. Same. Um I what was that record called? Um the gray one before like three, Eddie, right? three words, right? It was like Ma- Malice Hate Revenge or something. Yeah, yeah Malice yeah. Hate Revenge. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, hate yeah, yeah, yeah. Malice. Uh, yeah. Hate but, Malice Revenge. So okay. <laughs> but my question is, is then what is skinless? Skinless oh. is before I was that I looked band. at skinless as death metal, but looking back now i mean i could see so that's what i'm saying so there that's what it was like an imagery thing. It was like every image. style of music it's it's a combination of things that keeps building and building and building until it's different enough to where we're gonna now name it something else you know it if you if skinless wasn't deathcore that is most definitely a contributor to the death core thing i would definitely say skinless is in the like influence realm you know dying Taking fetus death metal and yeah dying fetus too but so where where do we yeah it's like where do we call it we're never gonna know and and us nerds are gonna sit around on a podcast <laughs> and try and figure it out right <laughs> now exactly in this man. moment you what know no born from oh, rock, rock, but, they, you know <laughs> this band from 98 did it on this record uh, yeah, that's all it is 140 on on this song and oh there's dudes that are Fuck like it, dude the sugar's football. death core bro it started in 93 i mean you could you could argue that uh a whole hate breed album is on chaos ad in one song you know that's a good argument i mean so, no I, I actually that was my my thing someone like i think it was Maybe Jamie Josta or something said something about how you know like Chaos ID was the dun 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 dun. dun what was dun, that? Ninety three, right? Ninety two, ninety three. What was it? I was like, I think it was ninety four. I don't know. Ninety four. No, I think it was in ninety three. Was it earlier? Than, okay, okay. Either but, way, uh, I, there's a song on there cards. that you're you're like, this is the blueprints of Hatebreed. Also, that, you know, like, like you know, Domination by Pantera. Like that's yeah, true. That's a straight up. Death score, metal core, yeah, yeah. So if you want to get back to like the Black Sabbath of what the fucking thing was, you know, it's basically it seems like like domination might be it. You know? Dude, I think there's a strong argument that like yeah, like it was Pantera that started that sound because mm-hmm. Jay started doing that shit, and then that's when Meshuggah started running with that shit. Is sprinkled in polyrhythms and some technical shit, but essentially like yeah. what Pantera was doing with those breakdowns i don't know that, that, that's what i think at least yeah i 100 percent agree with you i think that was like the and i think just someone kind of just hijacked it and was like no it's 
it's us dude. It's, <laughs> it's like oh you did the open chug first all right sick dude um <laughs> i feel like it's but you know like i, I felt like that was uh when i people started to call it breakdowns and stuff i was like um i'm like all right cool and then i became like more into death metal i was like fuck breakdowns dude <laughs> like, yeah. I, be, I went to a fuck breakdowns mode where i was like breakdowns suck dude like yeah i did that i, I was like yeah like when you're like listening to a band all of a sudden they stop and do a breakdown i was just be like next song i'm i'm done <laughs> like, I like, oh, like that breakdown six that's a groove part dude <laughs> <laughs> you ever listen that's to dying head. fetus <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like they ripped this off from this band, dude. You know, like turning on one of those guys. But uh listen, I mean it's it's cool like aging, like what Danny was kind of getting at earlier. It's cool aging through this process and like in the beginning being like fucking hateful of it, and then being like, I love all of it. This is fucking rad, that's heavy as yeah. fuck. That's sick, you know. It's like once because you're you're kind of closed down and trying to meet the guy that finds the new thing or wants to be the guy on the cutting edge when you're at that age, kind of when you're younger, it's kind of like I need to find the new band because I need to find the new drug for my friends, dude. I need to, find, right. you know, and then um, listening back after all that's gone and like, oh, like, like Anthony was, we used, we talked about it multiple times, but let's, you know, we'd make fun of him as his iPod had like kill switch engage. And we're like in this death metal band and we were like, kill switch engage. <laughs> <laughs> they and then I got, so I got, I presented the, the human abstract to them and they laughed at me because of the clean vocals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, listen to the shred, guys. The shred. Yeah, yeah. Listen, to, I literally got, got vocals, so. I got into Kill Switch Engage at the age of 36 and got heavily into them. I was like, I was like, this is sick, dude. This guitar player <laughs> yeah, rips. Yeah. This singer's sick. This drummer's sick. This yeah, everything is sick in this band. And I was like, at the time, I was so death metaled out that I was like, nope the the singing isn't for me you know like clean singing i'd be like nope change it <laughs> like, like immediately and, Dude, and now I, i'm like i, I to, love it i used to hate with a passion allison chains just because of the, oh. the vocals yeah and and this is when i was younger and yeah. and like now i i think allison chains is better than like 95 percent of the bands i listen to you know what i mean like <laughs> Isn't that strange? it's such it's a, so weird dude like yeah well, it's, our, it's, it's us wrestling with our ego at a young yeah. age yeah. Yeah, high 100%. testosterone uh alpha trying to alpha out dude that's all we're trying <laughs> to do dude it literally yeah. is all of that it's 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 such low level biological shit that's getting in the way of our brains. Like prison yard time, death dude. or metal fucking like trying to like puff our chest it's, out to like uh, it's yeah. literally the reason why there's almost eight billion people on this planet is that stage right there where we're all alphaing. We're all fucking uh, uh, mm. You know, and however we're gonna we're gonna do it. If we're gonna do it through music, we're gonna do it through other shit. We're not gonna do it at all and just fucking hold it up until we fucking you know fuck somebody up really bad and go to jail or something. You know, but it's it's literally alphaing out, dude. I know uh, this. I mean, th this band in particular, <laughs> alphaing stories that I, you guys, like you and Michael and stuff, like you guys were. You guys were alphaing pretty hard, dude. When I was touring with you guys, you guys were probably, actually, you guys were probably one of the gnarlier bands I had uh, toured with, as far as like you and, oh, and Michael beating up like five people at once at like Pomona. I remember, I remember oh that. fuck, dude! I was like, holy shit, dude! dude like, that was what a, a night, night, man. <laughs> a night. <laughs> I'm so glad you remember that though. Was, yeah. was that the same tour? Um um where was where when we were in like LA? Whiskey oh Go yeah, Go. I was gonna ask you about that. So I've 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 heard the story. You told that me was right what happened. Go that, was it it was, it was like on a, it? it was on a TV yeah. show, right? Yeah, uh world's dumbest brawlers. <laughs> 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 someone's gotta right find there. that is that, is that on uh, youtube somewhere no i got the oh link, i'll look dude. it up i'll look it up i got the link it's it's gonna be hard for you to find man it's, it'd be like one of those things where like i have to like give you the actual link but really it's the one where you almost got ran over your head almost got ran over right is it in the yeah. dark web yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's just it's, it's, it's hard to find it on youtube trust me i've like looked for it you know for, for a while i think i, I saved for, the like... link because yeah <laughs> 
I've actually Dude, looked for you. I've had, I've had the thought of, of that story in my head multiple times in the last 10 years. And I've looked for you on social media and couldn't find you. And was like, I wonder what Danny's up to, dude. And just like search for you. And you weren't on social media or <laughs> yeah. something. Or you maybe you were for a little while, but I was no, like, no, 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 not on social media, but yeah, yeah. Not, get, not getting ran over anymore, though. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you telling me the story the next day. I was like, what? And then like finding out it's like on a TV show like later on. Yeah. Well, was, what's the story? Let's fun. hear it, dude. What, what are we talking about? No, I just, uh, me, me and Mike got into a little fisticuffs the night before and then. <laughs> The night, the, the day after we played Whiskey Go Go, and uh, I was just in a bad mood, and there was free beverages at the show. So as soon as we got to the venue, like unloading, like I'm already drinking. I remember you were lit. Yeah, I remember that show. Absolutely blitzed. And then, yeah. uh, like, I think I was watching Faceless or something, and I don't know. I just got into it with some dude in the crowd, being a complete ass. So next, you know, we're fighting. We both get kicked out. So I'm walking back to the uh, the parking lot, and there's a, a fight going on uh, between a bouncer and these three guys that have their faces painted like like they're black metal, but they're wearing like the uh, parachute pants and all that. None of it made sense to me, so uh, I, I was just, I thought it was funny, and they were fighting, and I'm just drunk and amused, and then they bump into me, and I fall over the curb. Next thing you know, a fucking pickup truck runs over my hand. Oh, it almost wow. runs my head over, and uh, it ended up backing up. I had so much adrenaline at the time that I just got up, walked away like nothing happened, just tried to convince myself, like, <laughs> mind over matter. Like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> and uh, hand, like, my finger was broken. My hand yeah. was all fucked up. And yeah. uh, I remember uh, I went to – what exactly happened? I think we we called uh, somebody called nine one one or whatever. Cops responded and they were like, "Dude, it's Halloween. It's LA. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're gonna I have to just you. go. Yeah, just like go walk to the police station. That's like two miles away. Follow police report there. Uh. I'm like, okay. So I walk two miles away after the fire department comes and puts my arm in a like ghetto splint. Like there's just cardboard boxes and ice. <laughs> so I'm walking. Wow. You know, two miles, and uh, there was like this, like it was like a, like a, like a gay parade or something, man. And uh, it's just a bunch of like I don't know what was going on. I was fucked up, so I'm trying to walk through this, and another fight breaks out in front of me, and some dude throws <laughs> you have to a, walk like a, through a fight. Yeah, with the fucking split, and, and some guy throws a street cone, and it hits me in the face, and I get a fucking black eye, dude. <laughs> You get more injured on yes. the way. I get to the police station and I got to wait for like 45 minutes because it's a bullshit that they were filing a police report for. And uh, yeah, I remember when I got there, they were like, so what happened to you? I was like, yeah, I got ran over by a car. <laughs> I got beat up on the way. To tell Just you a lot that of, I got ran over by a car. A lot of booze involved at the time. So, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I got my report, whatever, nothing became of it. But then, like, six months later, Jake, uh, our OG bass player, um, he, he sent me the link. He's like, dude, I found the link. <laughs> <laughs> it was me on True TV. Yeah, True TV. That's right. I saw it too. Yeah, a yeah, long yeah. time ago. Uh, yeah. But I was like, dude, I was I there. there, dude. I was right there, <laughs> <laughs> dude. After we were just trying to make an argument earlier in the episode about how metal shows are chill and nobody fights, <laughs> and like, here's this uh, fucking massive story that started at a metal show, dude. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was that was pretty. Uh, that's like probably my craziest band story. And then, uh. We still had two weeks left on the tour, so <laughs> just finished the shows with my broken hand, broken hand, my yeah. the left hand, and that's yeah, it. We probably went to like Vegas or something after that. And... <laughs> I know, yeah. just a mellow it's Vegas trip. After that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I got a. They prescribed me a Vicodin for the pain, and I, I wasn't taking that shit. So I just uh, I gave all my Vicodin to the bass player suffocation for like all their merch. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I'll take God. a hoodie, some shorts. Let me get that Cuban waist T-shirt. Uh. <laughs> oh, fuck! 
<laughs> oh, good. Shit. You want to cut that out? <laughs> There's no flash. editing on this show. Shout, shout, shout out Derek, right? Derek. Yeah, Derek, big boy. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Me. I love that guy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Big, were you guys on this tour? Was it the same tour? Or oh, uh, or Mike Smith? Uh huh. That whole was that the same tour? Fuck yeah, dude. Oh my god, dude. That was a problematic, <laughs> awesome tour. <laughs> yeah, that was so much fun. But yeah, I just Jesus, remember hearing, like, probably a lot the of case lessons. Case was dropped one. off. They're going home. Like it's like. Why? What happened? Were you, were you there for all that? I was like at Loden and okay. I just heard some shit go down, but I didn't actually like see anything. There was like, cause there was this issues on the bus. So there was like personality clashes on the bus. And uh, mm-hmm. after the show, I just remember like, like we're trying to leave. And then like, there's this fucking drama going outside the thing. where like, like people of us uh, faceless are coming up like, fuck, we can't be on here anymore we're done we're done i was like what the fuck is going on and just like people throwing shit and i was like what the fuck is going on and uh what was so going yeah, on was, was the alphaing continued was alpha into the 30s and 40s for some people you know oh uh, yeah yeah Big no i know alpha. yeah it was a little crazy that was some of the funnier i mean to me they're funny now but like i remember yeah, actually danny you telling me <laughs> yeah Dan, danny told me like the next day after the 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 show and uh at the whiskey a go-go is where all that happened um i remember you telling me the next day what happened i was like what the fuck <laughs> like I, I i remember I, like i barely i was like we were all hanging out and having a good time and then the next thing i know like you're like gonna fucking have like an arm thing on you're like dude <laughs> fuck that was <laughs> and like um yeah that was that was <laughs> dude that night actually by the way the, one of the weirdest things I, I still like there's certain memories of that night in particular of, of tour that i have stuck in my head there was a dude on Faceless's bus that was friends with him. That's super Jewish, like the most Jewish guy. And for Halloween, he dressed like Hitler. <laughs> and hey, he's got that. Like... He's got the past, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's he had the, the whole past. thing on and the mustache and everything. And he is a hundred percent Jewish. And, and I was like, and... "Whoa!" I was like, my brain was just all like, "What's going on?" Here? On their do bus, it, dude. You could do it, dude. Man. I think um. The first night of that tour kicked off at uh, the Palladium, and it was like that two day event, if I'm not mistaken, right? It, it was like, or maybe Suicide it was, Silence? Yes. Oh, God. Suicide that's Silence. Kind of, yeah. And I'm trying to think of what other bands, I think BT Band. It's like Blackville uh, Brides. Maybe I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably cross referencing. No, I remember that was the first day of the tour. I remember because Danny's yeah. like me and Anthony's like one of our best friends. Well, I mean, it's like literally his god dad of his kids. Like, you I remember Dan's Dan? like, We're gonna meet up, yeah. start up here. And I'm like, And I remember, uh, I think it might have been one of those shows where suicide was over suffocation, it was a little awkward. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, kind of a, <laughs> it's a weird one. Yeah, it was yeah. probably definitely a weird one for Dan for sure. Yeah, I've I've been there for a few times with that, with suffocation being before suicide silence, and like Dan's like, I don't want to do this. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that was definitely a, a me and Dan blacked out. He they were like sponsored by Jägermeister, and like on their bus they had like Jägermeister like pouring machines, and Jeez. I just we both blacked out. Right before I blacked out, I remember. Dan running this is fuck this is really mean but Dan felt bad about it and apologized later but he was like so blacked out he was just running and diving into other people's trailers <laughs> like okay. like all the drums and shit he's just diving like this into the the I was like fuck man Joel what are you doing right now but no this was already talked about on the show <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, whatever Dan's Dan's come on here and said a bunch of shit but yeah Dan that. OG bass player of Animosity Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we toured with them when Dan was in the band and yeah. he Ed was Dean, I, at number dude. 12 looks like you and we uh, went yeah, to yeah, high yep. school together. Awesome. We yeah. started our first death metal band together, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's That's all part of the same town of dude. Anthony, uh, Pacifica, California, That's like family. Dude. That's my family, dude. Yeah, Love yeah. Right. Get sober, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> dude, why don't you get sober right now, motherfucker? What are you sitting <laughs> on? I told Dan, I was like, dude, if you stop drinking, I'll stop drinking. Like, it's up to you, dude. Yeah, well, <laughs> why are you calling him out live on a fucking podcast, dude? That's it's funny. Like, whatever. He, hey, man, I'm whatever. like fucking six Miller lights in, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, six. Is, I know, is, we're all, we're all surges in. 
is what it is, man. He's not even here, too. (laughs) 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 Solid rebuttal. All right. No, he's let's get into Danny a little bit, dude. Let's get some Danny history right now. We don't gotta find that true TV link, send that over to me, and we gotta play that. Yeah, I'm gonna need your phone number for that one, but uh, (laughs) it's a (laughs) three (laughs) one. Yeah, give it out on live. You've been Here. giving out other people's shit online. Just give it out, dude. Maybe Just I can fucking like right. send it to me and I'll send it to him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Time for one. We'll, 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 we'll place it for the right place, but we want to know your history first. But I want to throw that in the kind of towards the end. All right, let me just send this to you, uh, J Dog, real quick. It's funny, I have this link on hand. <laughs> That's. That's um, like on deck, dude. I yeah. had I had certain questions for you, and that was like number one because I remember that night, and I was like, <laughs> and that 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 one, and then um, and real quick, we'll get into as we go into your history. We talked about pre podcast, but uh, Danny came up to me at a show. We were playing, uh, I forget if it was Summer Slaughter or something, and Danny had a fucking severed savior inverted and inserted shirt, and he was backstage, and he was all, "What's up, dude?" He was like, "What up, dude? How's it going?" and I remember that's the first time we interacted and you were like, fucking love the unique leader shit, dude, blah, blah, fuck. You were like talking about that. And you're like, I'm going to tour with you in a few months. And I was like, oh shit, what band? You're like, three guys are dead. I'm like, oh fuck. That's awesome, dude. I can't wait to fucking hang out. And, uh, but you knew your shit coming up to me. You like knew dropping all these band names and stuff. And I was like, of the kind of the underground tech scene, you were like completely on it. And I was like, oh, it's like, almost like a Dan, What's up with Danny's, dude? They just know all their shit, I guess. Like, Dan Kenny knows all this shit, too. It's like one of these things. You came up to me, and I was like, whoa, I was very impressed with everything. the shirt. I'd never seen in person. I'd never seen one of those. And I remember, like, uh, Dusty and stuff, like, dropping that. It's, we're going to call the song Inverted and Inserted. What do you think? And I was like, to see you walk up with that shirt, I was, f- like, fucking blown away. It was awesome. Why is he in that band that plays all those breakdowns? <laughs> 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 Dude, I, I at, forget, the, at the time i might have thought that but <laughs> i forget like how i how i recognize you it, either i i saw you perform before or you're you were wearing a, a sick death metal shirt that's like the only thing that I yeah. yeah but uh yeah but that was awesome that was a i remember it's one of the the cool joel what of... sick death metal shirt do you think you were wearing at that moment dude let's figure it out probably vile <laughs> was it uh, vile yeah. shirt Man, I was, like I was forgotten. Band, was it the dude. small? Yeah, was it the baby? Doll, was it the baby one that we squeezed? No, I, I like I like logo shirts. I don't like all the crazy shit because I don't know. I just like simple logos to like give the band name away. Yeah, That's yeah. But I've always liked. But I mean, for funny circumstances, I like like some of those development shirts that R.I.P. Uh, Trevor would wear. Black Dolly I Remember in Texas, he wore this one shirt. He, like they were there and gave him the shirt that was just fucking like. Cancel, cancel culture. Like you're <laughs> fucked if you wear this shirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it, dude. I'm like, all right, it's on you, dude. I'm not. Dude, it's I like rape, this, uh, the yeah. everything, the worst thing. It's like just t- tie, like bind, torture, kill, like babies and shit. I'm like, all right, dude. If that's if that's what you want to throw out there, it's all good. Are, are you guys cool with the uh Cephalio trips? Are you guys? Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Word. I had that one album artwork where it was just that lady laying on the bed <laughs> with all kinds of stuff happening to her. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, I remember, I, I, I go for it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I just remember um, I got back from tour and uh, I just like threw my entire like load into the, the hamper and my stepmom. Uh, I remember I didn't know that she was gonna like do my laundry. And she did my laundry, and I remember like like that shirt was specifically set to the side. Like she did not approve, <laughs> did not Dude, wash it. <laughs> I kind of judge my shirts now on how my kids stare at my body. Like <laughs> I can't wear Sheila gutted shirt anymore, guys. I just can't do it around the kids. You know, I I cherish that shirt. I love that shirt. That artwork's sick, dude. But I can't wear it on the weekend. Night out. Any <laughs> <laughs> Go to the winery with the wife for a day. <laughs> the only time I get to grand. represent on um, in middle ship basically is this show, you know. Last of, <laughs> last of Lucy, what up? Just and, uh, 
Yeah, dude. It's it, it's <laughs> a funny thing. I don't I don't I don't really know other what we were just talking about other than. Well, that. no, that's yeah. that was used to be a thing though. It's like making things like more and more aggressive. It's like the artwork kind of had to match what we were kind of doing musically. So. Yeah. Like when getting that insidious decrepancy shirt, they had like deep throat the crucifix one that I'd wear. And it was just like a girl like with a crucifix <laughs> upside down, like going through like her body and coming out her her end area. <laughs> Ian just was... reminded me. Sorry, I wanted to mention that shirt too. Is uh, the Jesus is a cunt shirt, and the front is a nun masturbating. That was the shirt that That's actually classic. made me. Out of all the shirts that I've ever worn, dude, that was the shirt that really made me be like, oh, shit, dude, I'm making a serious statement. Right dude, <laughs> that's like the natural progression of like. The- I'm going to go get some fucking frozen, you know, dinners at fucking Safeway. <laughs> dude, like. Is that the gateway shirt, dude? It's like- <laughs> yeah. It's like it's you graduate shoot. from the fucking backpack that you. Wow. Yeah, from Joe like, Corner. Yeah. <laughs> to the Jesus is a country. You've come yeah. a long way, yeah. man. Because <laughs> you're pissed about the backpack. Like, dude, Joel Corner was sick, dude. Fuck you, dude. Jesus is a cunt. Dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, it's so good. Great. Great stuff, dude. I'm having a great time right now, guys. Dude, Cradle <laughs> had, some, had some pretty sick shirts. Yeah, Cradle did too. Yeah. Right, Just like right. naked women just on the front just like what yeah, else was cool artwork <laughs> yeah yeah I, it, I wonder how many people watch this show and look at my headphones every episode and i never <laughs> mention it and none of us <laughs> mention anything about it he broke but... him like 70 episodes ago and he just <laughs> won't get him rocking because like wearing... they still have the strap they still yeah. have the strap in, right here so i just gotta like Position it's like a shitty Mickey Mouse enough to where it <laughs> it still grabs my ears enough, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Danny, let's get into you, dude. Uh, obviously, you know, like running into the first time, <laughs> fucking Mickey Mouse. Um, yeah, just your your history. What what got you into music and stuff like that? Because I know running into you when I ran to you, you knew your shit. So obviously, you had been through a journey to get there. So I want to know. Same question as asked Justin to you. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I think uh, just from the early, like early when I was like a shorty, you know what I mean? Like five years old. Um, so I'm from Chicago. So uh, around the time I was five years old, the Bulls were winning a lot of championships. And uh, so um, there would always be – you know, like a, a cruise, like if they if they won a title, like my mom and dad would take me out or my aunts and uncles and we just drive around the block and everybody would be celebrating. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember there was one song on the radio that always hit me. And I didn't know what the fuck it was at the time, but as I grew older, I knew what it was. And it was that dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dun, dun. We are the Chandler. So, dude, Queen, fucking like. Hell yeah. yeah like I knew that. When I was like five years old, like Queen, that's my shit. And totally. then, um, like my my uh, my mom and dad, they they didn't really like me listening to like that rock shit at the time, so they try to like shelter me on it. What would um, they want you to listen to if they if they had the choice? Yeah, what were they listening? Oh to? man, like fucking Whitney Houston and like salsa music. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> my dad, my dad's actually a, a like a. a pretty successful bass player like um for for like uh just latin jazz latin oh uh, yeah pretty much anything um so he, he kind of wanted me to like grow up in you know with that but dude it was just rock and roll the entire time you know like just mm-hmm. um so they tried you know like keeping that away from me as long as they could um until like maybe sixth grade where uh on the radio they were, they were playing a lot of like cypress hill and uh and uh mm-hmm. system of a down nice. and dude like system of a down toxicity really still to this day dude that like right. opened everything for me man like that's a that, that's yeah. a real album dude that's a real album dude i yeah. mean like talk about like add like i would seriously you know sit through 
an hour and a half of whatever the fuck they played on the radio just to finally hear like a system of a down song. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this is before the internet and shit, but yeah. Um, so I mean, system, system of down, the, the one before that uh, is what introduced me to the band. I would, I've said it many times in the show, but there was a, a point during the early morning before school that MTV would play new metal uh, music videos. Uh, I, I would wait to find Slipknot or Mudvayne and, and my introduction to system of a down was during that time. So I'm eating my fucking honey bunches of oats or whatever. And, and I'm watching TV and then this thing comes on and it's, uh, Sugar, oh, what but, was it? sugar, yeah. So, so what was you guys' yeah, first fuck. reaction to sugar? Because I remember when I first heard that, I was, was like, "Weird, dude." It I was, was like, fucking, "Weird." I was weirded out by it. Me out. Like, it tripped me out, but I was intrigued. Still, and the last, the last minute of that song is like yeah. that. That to me is like that heavy shit. I was like, "Dude, this is scary." You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm like ten years old, but dude, like totally. And then spiders, spiders, and stuff, and and war. And all the songs on that album that was like yeah I like getting like once once i actually accepted sugar i was like is the the dun, 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 dun. i was like what yeah. the fuck is going on i was like so yeah. sugar. i was like what the fuck this is like <laughs> such a, that, that's what made them what they are you know to all of us. yeah like, it's, it's, it's still such a unique uh yeah addition to my adolescence dude you know and, and danny you talking about like adhd or add or whatever it's like man that band you if you have add you you're stuck <laughs> it's got they got they're all yeah, over the dude. place you know uh, that's perfect that's perfect but that, that was it man that like they, they really like got me into the heavier shit next thing you know slipknot you know iowa which i still think is a fucking awesome album oh man. dude like, I still think Don't that's get, a heavy album, dude. Like, I mean, oh, yeah, that's my favorite again, album. But... If we're gonna talk about the first <laughs> self-titled was um, it was amazing and it still is to this day to me, and and it was so powerful. But w- once Iowa came, I was I was literally floored as yeah. a teenager that this thing that was so powerful to me had just in, in increased so much in intensity and power yeah, dude. yeah. and and it it just showed me what um being into a band and then watch being with them as they progress into something and then experiencing it in real time can we yeah. talk about one part about that album that like when because i was way into them in the, in the self-title i was like obsessed and then i knew iowa was coming out but that first song on iowa where he goes here we go again motherfuckers i was like i was like, <laughs> I, was like I, I, I got the this now i just got the chills oh, just now by saying it i just like, felt i remember you, just going bro. like damn I felt you. <laughs> like i it's was like here we go rich, man we I are like, going oh, again motherfuckers fuck. dude and i was like we were right there for the ride dude yeah i liked um i liked the self-titled one but i for mm-hmm. some reason like it just lost me after that like i never listened to them really? again until um funny story we we toured with the acacia strain um probably in like 05 06 mm-hmm. and their their van broke down so they had to ride with us uh for some of the tour and i remember sharing um you know a bench with dl and dl he ha- he was uh listening to iowa and i was like ah, this shit i don't want to hear this shit like, <laughs> like Dude, you gotta fucking hear this and it yep. was um it was uh what was that? Uh, dun, 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 bow, now, dun, 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 bow, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gives me like an earbud, like just one. It's track four. I know. I don't know what song it's called. But it's track four. I know. Yeah. Is it my plague? My plague. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I was yeah, like, yeah. this shit is fucking dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. So then I, you know, obviously went back. Resident Evil Two, baby. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That was that. like the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They had they but, had a song uh, in that. Yeah, that was actually like the uh the song. Well, I don't know. This was back when like uh DVDs and shit like were Dude. were 
they like uh they're like oh yeah this is the song for the uh the movie or whatever but, dude uh, yeah Slip- slipknot was one of those bands that i uh at sam goody i bought that vhs welcome to the neighborhood welcome to the it, neighborhood it was on like it 20 was... something minutes long or some shit yeah and it was i got it on bucks. vhs dude i got it on vhs it was three bucks and then after Iowa came out, I went back into Sam Goody and it was thirty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like they were trying to get promos out and stuff like that at that time. And then like, but yeah, Slipknot yeah. was you know to and that's a, a win bridge. too. And you're like, ha, suckers, dude! I got it for three bucks, dude. <laughs> it's 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 such a bridge from new metal to like more extreme metal, like that that like when you're into corn and then you know Joey Jordison's blast beating kind of like brings you over into death metal and so many people have been brought over from joey jordison and and that extreme style of drumming like it's like it doesn't have to be like david silveria or you know it doesn't have to be like kind of like like it could be like and be still the same kind of and the fact first of all the i mean is slipknot new metal i don't think they're no but check me out you no, wait, no, I, that's, that's a big question. That's a big question, though. Do you think Slipknot is Slipknot because they're in the time? Like, is Allison Chains grunge is slip? Like, they're not, they're not, they're not. No, Nirvana, there's something, there's something they, different. There, Mudvayne's different too. People put mu- that LD50 record. That's not new metal. I mean, there's essence. But the time, but but it. they get the, their their look at the time and their hey guys. Give me give me twenty seconds. I'm gonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sure. boy, dude, you can do whatever you need. Um, cool. but nah, no, dude. is it is it is it because corn was new metal? Uh, coal chamber is new metal. Limbisco was seven dust. Even though seven dust, you could argue that that's not really new metal. But there's so many of these new metal bands that like just because of the time they came up, were they're new metal forever. It's like oh, you're new metal. It's like we're not gonna worry about it. <laughs> like it's like you're yeah, categorized by lumped into yeah, that. But I think by like, your period, you know, like the 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 turntables and stuff like that. It was like I don't know. I think that was part yeah, of it too. The, totally. Yeah. I think that actually, the yeah. The turntables that, and the sampling, maybe. But yeah, I think that I actually think that might be the reason why. And the I remember the what, spit it out. I remember first talking ah, about spit it out dude. on a school bus, and I was like. Dude, this guy's like death rapping. <laughs> like, yeah. he's like he's he's like yelling and rapping. And I was like, and I showed it to people and just got like ninety people hooked. Like, people were like, "What the fuck is this? Like, this is like aggressive, like that dude yelling you rapping." Just, you're bringing up memories of the same <laughs> thing that I was in that between realm of hip hop and rock because when i was younger are you a rapper or a rocker well i'm both dude like <laughs> yeah i don't want to take a side like leave me alone a yeah, three dollar bill and, y'all <laughs> oh, dude. and and, and and so i'd show these rappers some you know hip-hop in metal or something like slipknot or whatever you're just mentioning and I'd send it, uh, and they'd be like, "Oh, dude, this is actually dope." So it it's it needs to be like spoken in a certain language, and then a- at a certain point they'll get it. Not they. I'm just saying, like anybody, if if there was a rap version of metal, it where there's more m- metal in one part, we can speak that language, you know. Definitely. But yeah. I don't know, dude. It it slipped not it, it's funny when we were talking about the the self-titled and then my introduction to death metal happened in between that and Iowa. So I'd hear Morbid Angel, Cannibal Corpse, and then Iowa came out and I was like, oh shit, they're blast beating now, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it kind of linked it, it all together. It linked it, it all kind together. of did yeah. link it all together. I think that's yeah. the that's the main component that made Slipknot the, like the great bridge for me to get to the extreme side of things because they showed me, oh, they actually were introduced to the shit that I found since their first record because they just showed me in their second record. And and there's uh bonus tracks on the uh self-titled one that if you're a super fan of anything dude finding bonus tracks is just amazing yeah and there's a few of them where he was 
Joey was doing double bass blasts and shit, and they that didn't make it on the record, which you can hear it and compare it to those songs and realize why, but it it still happened during their recording session where they're like fuck it dude let's just go straight death metal right here dude or grind let's do it and they showed that they could do it so i it, it was all yeah we tied that's yeah, a very hard. very important album i would say i was such an important album. or like th that bridge that they brought was it's you know it's still to this day like i listen to it if you I need a bridge right now yeah, you can't it, just uh, dive in. It doesn't work. That's yeah. we after 171 episodes now. It's almost like you know we we you know we've had all the old school guys from Death and whatever Cynic and everyone. They always say like Metallica or you know like certain bands. I feel like the Metallica bridge for them from Black Sabbath or whatever from Iron Maiden, like Slipknot's like kind of our millennial. Like that's like that was the one that's going like all right. Yeah. It's like this is now the bridge. Like this is this is the Right. Metallica to some, or the Iron Maiden to Metallica bridge or the like to bring it to something different or Metallica to Slayer or whatever you want to say but um yeah getting to that like that was all of a sudden it's like oh this is now acceptable like I was listening to, I used to listen to Deicide as a joke to my friends to show them like how crazy metal was and be like listen to this guy fucking growling what the fuck is it <laughs> like, I would like joke around people would laugh and I'd be like yeah it's hilarious right and then fast forward five years i'm like this is the sickest vocals you can fucking possibly have this is not even close like you know what i mean it's it's that slow bridge process through bands like that and i, I feel like iowa might be like up there with like rain and blood and like all these like huge like bridge i mean at the time obviously if you look back everyone always says older is better but i feel like for a lot of people at that time when they're listening to a lot of new metal and then they hear you know like that iowa they're just like oh fuck i understand all of it now and system of a down as well let's kind of bridge like the gap people, people in like our age group you know like maybe 30s to 40 i don't even want to include 30s like 35 <laughs> to 40s you know um a lot of it is going to be like slip that system corn yeah yeah like those three you know definitely. what i mean definitely that's just that's just me though i feel like uh one that um really uh, i've been i went through a new metal just re-listening kind of thing recently and seven dusts man seven dust dude they have some of the heaviest riffs like some of the heaviest guitar tones i've ever heard of their first album it's like they're tuning to g like in 99 and just yeah. chunking Shit's the funk heavy. funk the I fuck remember, out of it i remember seven dust two, 2001 seven dust yeah i mean yeah. denial is probably like their biggest like song from that era but like bef the album before that man they have they have one riff I, I can't think of it's either bitch or terminator or whatever but they have a riff that i used to reference for like to tell like um record uh engineers or people engineers recording engineers to be like what how the fuck do they do this it's like i don't understand <laughs> how you can get that heavy and it's like i forget what amps so it was like I'm, i think it was a mesa boogie but it's this most insanely brutal crunches I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, this was before everyone got obsessed with all this shit, you know, like, and seven dust was kind of on the, on the pulse of it first. And, you know, they were best friends with dime bag and they were always like hanging out with dime bag and stuff. And I was like, I feel no one ever gives them credit. And I'm like, I feel like seven dust should be up there with them with the kind of the, the big, the big three of new metal, you know, I mean, corn has to be up there, but we weren't into corn for the tone, you know, we, I mean, they had good tones, but as far as like, you know, like new metal, it was kind of like, I mean, what's Borland? I, I probably would say is the best new metal guitar player. If I had to pick one, the best guitar player it would probably be West Borland. But be... I wasn't looking at it like that. When you said, corn wasn't heavy that was fucking heavy dude they were like, I'm talking the, about like the the seven you missed you were pissing but the seven dust like seven dust no one talks about seven dust everyone's just oh, like oh dude. and i'm like no, you're right i, I used think to hate the dust. vocals but yeah 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 you're I like I used to hate, they, were, they were clean they were clean yeah vocals. exactly that's how <laughs> i was back then and I, but like listening now that dude like yeah. and you watch him live yeah. too he's he's a front man dude 
And my fiance is black, so I'll say it, but black don't correct. That guy has not fucking aged, dude. <laughs> that guy I saw him recently. He looks the same as my childhood. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, uh, I even showed uh, my fiance. I'm like, dude, this guy right now, we're watching right now. I watched him like 25 years ago and he looks the same. I'm like, what the fuck? She's like, black don't correct, dude. I'm like, I <laughs> I'm like, you got it. <laughs> dude, speaking of, like, remember Drowning Pool? Oh, yeah. Body yeah. Pool was sick, dude. Yeah, 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 totally. That was kind of like Linkin Park was actually where I stopped listening to New Metal. was when Linkin Park was coming up. And I got into them yeah. later, like in my late 30s. I got into uh, Linkin Park. But that's when I was like, nope. I'm Sepultura now, and I am Slayer, <laughs> and I and I like moved on from it, you know. And man, especially after dude, you know, killed himself, and then Lincoln Park became very like heartfelt and sad to me. Like it became like really touching to me, and and same with Soundgarden and stuff, like Chris Cornell and stuff. That when that whole that shit, uh, that Chris Cornell is the only person in in my life that I've seen. And a uh, passed away thing on my phone and started crying. <laughs> like, yeah, that was like that, that was the only one. He's the only one that's got me. Where I was like, "Fuck, dude, that like that dude, his vocals got me through like so many hard times in my life." Like, and just to know that he did that, I was like, "What the fuck?" It was so, you know, go, going through all that shit, and uh, and then Lincoln Parks dude did it too, and I like went back and listened to his music and i was like damn dude like that, this is like real like i thought it was like complainy when i first heard it i was like yeah. you're complaining like shut the fuck up <laughs> and then and then he went through all that and i was like oh man he was really dealing with a lot of shit and it's coming out through his art and now i connect with it way more you know like yeah yeah but it's because you're almost 40 dude i'm an old i'm a boomer <laughs> <laughs> But, dude, uh, we're turning I, 40, dude. Uh, I know. I know. All, uh, you just turned 40, you said, Justin, right? Yeah. How's, last it, feel, month. how's, it, how's it feel? You, you all different or what? I don't know. I was like, it was super weird. Like, all month, I was like, oh, I can't turn 40. Like, this is <laughs> it, dude. This is it. But once it happened, I was like, uh, it's, it's yeah, yeah. It's cold. you can't stop it. Embrace. <laughs> exactly. Embrace, dude. So 40s you know, play, played a uh, festival like Danny's like dude after. I'm dude when I was at Danny's age I, I always made a joke I would say uh now that I'm in my 30s <laughs> at 35 <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm in my 30s dude I need to do this this and that you know <laughs> when you turn 30 is a big deal too you're like fuck dude eh, I feel like 30 isn't shit, really. Like, 32 I mean, now. is when, like... Yeah, now. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I know. Well, like, 32 is when it's like, okay, stuff is hurting now. And then it's like, <laughs> you know, like, 35, like, where I'm at, it's like, okay, like, I can't lose weight anymore. And then, like... <laughs> Maybe uh, I should quit touring full-time and get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, I doing know. with my life? Yeah. it's 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 rough. I mean... Looking down the barrel of 40 is, I mean, 30 when you hit that. And also, if you, the funny thing is, I, if a 30 year old wants to hang out with me, I'm like, no, dude, you're all young, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to hang out with a 30 year old. Oh, like a, like a, a dude's like a 30 year old dude, like, dude, come to the show. I'm like, no, dude, you're all young. It's fucking weird. I don't want to hang <laughs> out with you. don't have to play catch up all <laughs> night. Listen to your music, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't give a shit what you're listening to. Um, <laughs> but no, no, it's, it's literally like, 25 year old people are all ch are children to me now they're 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 oh, absolute yeah. children they're like kids like like they're in high school 25 is in high school to me My, yeah it's weird it's weird yeah. yeah like seeing like like high schoolers now almost like i'm like dude you guys are like infants like what the fuck <laughs> like get the fuck off the road dude i'm gonna hit an infant i don't want <laughs> it's a trip dude like it's how it's just perspective because you didn't realize how dumb you were at that age until yeah. now dude. Yeah. <laughs> your, your parents were right too and they always said like it goes by fast you just gotta blah 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 and you're like whatever yeah. dad or mom and then before you know it, you're like you're like 60 like shit dude it goes by so fast you know yeah. it, it, it just it jumps right by like there's out like necrophages epitaph came out like 23 years ago <laughs> a couple days ago Still waiting on that fucking new album, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Two decades. 
pushing three decades. Like, what the fuck? Like, that used to when I was How a kid. How sick would it be to make it your whole life, and then on your deathbed, your great-grandchild comes in and is like, hey, great-grandpa, the new necrophagist finally came <laughs> out. <laughs> and that's what you listen to before you die? <laughs> So let me tell you an old touring story about when I shit on Suffocation's bus. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, did you? Was that on that tour? Fuck, yeah. dude, shitting I, think I, I think I remember this. I think I remember this. shitty story. It's the shittiest story. <laughs> There's nothing glamorous to it. They just, you know, like they felt bad that I got ran over by a car. So they're like, yeah, you can hang out on the bus with us. <laughs> I've shit on oh, a couple yeah. buses. Sneaky. I've sneaky shit on, like, I think Black Dahlia's bus and maybe stuff. No, I don't know. Anyways continue <laughs> no no i just i i you know i went into the little stall in there and i was in there for you know a good 15 minutes yeah no idea <laughs> yeah na naturally they're, they're a tour manager as soon as i get out he's just kind of like he has a grin he's like it's like hey dan you shit on the bus i was like yeah and then i remember i remember frank from Suffolk was sitting down and i hear him in the back says you can't do that you can't man <laughs> You can, think, dude. You can yeah, drop but, one. But they were like, we're gonna, charged, we're gonna get charged two hundred dollars by the bus driver or whatever. Oh shit! No, you can't. No. <laughs> they had a pass. They, they clear you know, the pass. tank and all that kind of shit. You guys would be smelling it the whole time, right? That's what I mean. The whole it was their bus. Was. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick, though. Seeing Frank's reaction, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. No, it's Frank. Like, was, it was, it was, it's like I disappointed my dad or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Pretty Frank. Was, close. Frank was awesome, dude. Oh, I, yeah. I loved hanging out with that dude, like playing poker with him on the just the New York guy, just like cussing you out and shit. I think we just got raided or something. But uh, yeah, shout no, out to everybody popping in. But that was uh, Jesus. I love you guys. I love you so much. Oh, that's um, Copper Crab behind that. Oh, did Shout we get rid of Copper Crab? Oh, shit. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, we'll talk about other things besides shitting on buses when we're not supposed to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when we're unaware of the ramifications. Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, there was a time when we were on tour with Cryptopsy in, in Europe, and, and Matt was like, dude, I have to shit so bad. And I was like, shit in a bag, dude. And he's all, no, dude, I can't. And uh, he's all, you have to cover me, dude. And uh, I was like, all right. So I had to sit there. And just like watch the door while he shit <laughs> in a bag. No, no, he shit in in the stall where you're not supposed to shit. It's too. It was Cryptopsy, uh, us, and Merciful on a tour in Europe, and now I just had to sit there and just like fucking so stand there like a bodyguard. Be like it's all good, dude. It's all not wasn't a fart, dude. Don't worry about it. it, was, yeah. <laughs> it was all, but uh, yeah, the shitting on the bus thing. That's now it's almost like the new like mile high club like if you want to go on, <laughs> go, on go on a band's bus that you love and if you can sneak a shit off in there no don't do that don't i'm just kidding but uh tour ships yeah. are gnarly you can't sneak one of those off dude no I remember uh there's people that used to shit in bags animosity frank used to shit in a bag would shit in a bag and then yeah, like wrap it up it, throw it doggy bag it yeah no just put it under his bunk and then the he started he uh roadside records dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i would like i would see people like in like random places and just use the back of the bus as like a brace and just shit on the ground <laughs> <laughs> i mean you gotta you gotta go dude like you yeah. can't I not mean, go. It, it does it that is a thing that is not talked about much is just the normal human necessities that you need as a yeah. band on tour. Basic, right. you know? Here we go. This is basic this is... necessities. So Naveen Chaney said you have to dump in between the van and the trailer. So that's do, you the put, move. do you put partitions up on the sides too? Do you give right, yourself right, a little right. like privacy? Like you, you just gotta go think... for it, dude. You gotta act like you know what you're doing. Walk and over it's there a safe way just... bag. Do you like hook it do you have a, like a special little hookup situation where you can hook it on the trailer hitch and then just pull it and then dump or what <laughs> dude? like this is this is fascinating or just, to me or just eat, that, questions, dude, eat that 250 dollar fee and just fucking drop one like luxuriously where do you, like... do you toss it to the side <laughs> of the road do you throw it in the that's fucked if it's just in like a like the city worker that has to go pick that, like, just uh, they're 
trying to dump some Dorito bags and fucking shit. And then all of a sudden there's human feces in there, dude. Fuck, dude. It's uh, Friday, bro. I got a fucking, I, I had plans <laughs> and now I got human shit smell for the rest of the night. God. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like a situation where I had to like improvise, but yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, Usually like just women's somebody... bathrooms when you when you pull up to the venue, right? You just <laughs> <Yeah>. shit like <laughs> that's what you have to do. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the thing though. I mean, Gatorade bottles work for piss throughout the drives. That's 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 I think Gatorade bottles with the wide mouth is the perfect touring piss receptacle. Yeah, you can't trust a dump in the wide mouth because you know, like you know, it, it gets you off the side. You know, this is all segueing too, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't. I think you know. <laughs> Fecal I know, dude. You know. Oh, Fecal uh, yeah. dude. Come the on, The honest on the play that I hate saying the words, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love playing that song. I hate saying the words. <laughs> I think they're it, hilarious, it, dude. It, it is. Right. It, it, there's definitely humor up in there. And Dusty was up in here earlier. And I love, I do love the words, but at the same time, just saying them just makes you feel a little, little, little icky. <laughs> <laughs> what were the? Just recite some of the lyrics because I know, like, the using the skulls. Dude, there's old. one part. Okay, there's good. one part where it's like, it's like, I think it's like, eat my shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Eat my shit, you stupid cunt, or something. Yeah. What, what does it say? The song starts off. Uh, if I if I can remember correctly. Shit addiction drives me to kill. <laughs> My temptations are revealed. Those are the two first lines. <laughs> but now, I'm going to get lost because I got to hear the music. But shit addiction drives me to kill. My temptations are revealed. Fecal mess <laughs> upon your chest. Lovely stench. Yeah. The bitches bless. <laughs> you uh, will die, and so will you because you, you ate you my ate poo. My poo. <laughs> Shove my feces down yeah, your throat. throat. Using your skull for As my urine. <laughs> Yo, it's so sick. Yeah. <laughs> Love that's that all shit. fucking dusty and, and and dude that's like a local hit <laughs> when it came it really was dude anytime severed played a local show you could see how m there was massive amounts of people that would just know the words to those songs dude. oh yeah and dusty would point at everybody and it, it was it was something <laughs> special to see of this like un you know to the world unknown band just screaming about shit to people and everybody's just like yeah because the music behind it was just so sick oh god know? so sick mike gilbert's writing and troy on drums you just fuck dude it was I so know. good so good and it's still so good dude what what is um some new like uh some new shit that you guys have been listening to in, the, in that like realm that's that's kind of like floored you guys like only bands that floor you guys warforged dude that's some stuff i've been listening to again lately that still floors me dude uh, the warforged dudes from chicago shout out to the homies they've been on here a couple times uh, i'm from chicago what the fuck yeah what those are my boys guys? man I, oh okay, okay. Like okay some of my good friends <laughs> oh yeah yeah they're, dude, they're uh ever since uh, th their music uh, was um something that caught my attention obviously because i've known jason for a while and and then seeing him live totally locked that shit in for me so then going back to listening to them after seeing them live that's such a great thing dude when okay. when uh the live performance it, we've talked about it many times too on the show uh when you're introduced to a band uh, for the first time live and they give you all they got and they're set and that locks it in in that moment. Well, Warforged, I knew about them before, but something about that live performance when I saw them with Cryptopsy um, totally just injected itself into me. And, and yeah, dude, Warforged has been 
the stuff that I, I uh, have been drawn to as of late. Uh, Igor, do you jo- I, I guess it's just anybody who's recently like flipped me out live in the last year or so, you know? Yeah, I mean, for me, God, man, I'm, yeah, so I'm old. So uh, <laughs> I've just been getting, I'm, you know, guitar player mentality, just kind of uh, getting into the prog metal. That's pretty much what I just get in the people doing, pushing boundaries and guitar and timings and stuff that are fucked up. I love that shit. I, I love just like being confused. I like being confused with music and how, how good people have gotten at music. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, dude. I don't <laughs> Like I have to sit there and like tap it out for like 17 times, listen to your song to figure out what the fuck you're doing. Like to me as a, as an older guitar nerd, that's pretty much where I've gone. It's like prog nerdy metal, like Haken and, you know, like, Haken, uh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, a Caligula's horse is great too. There's, there's a bunch of cool bands that are out there that are just on this, like, you know, it's all clean singing and they have a couple growl parts. You're like, Oh, <laughs> that's, that's for me <laughs> just kidding. um but um there's a lot of cool bands out there that are just pushing the limits and stuff and and there's a and, and fury is great and entheos is great um so many cool bands that i hear that i'm like all right this is a new sound i like this um entheos's last album actually not not just because they're in the chat but um uh hearing cheney's like influence on her singing for good not just going for you know the the fry or the growl just going for like a clean trippy kind of part in the middle of it and i think i think they did a great job of making it work in the middle of things i like hearing bands that can make two different styles work together not seeming like it's like rap metal it's like metal then rap metal then you know but like making it seamlessly work like an an opeth kind of style of like just make it flow correctly and let it let it go where it's like this is part of a journey that we're on. It's not just, it's not necessarily just like, oh, we're into two different styles of music. It's like adding to the full story of the song, and and, and that's kind of what I've gotten to as I get older. So I'm I'm boring, dude. Boomer, basketball. That wasn't that boring. Golf. That was kind of cool. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, dude, they're like going through different dimensions, dude. But they have somebody that's taking them through holding their hand and just being like, it's okay, dude, we're going to go into the metal section now. And then we're going to go into the prog metal section. now. Yeah. What, what, what about boring though, it's, like, it's still like PTSD from when I was a kid going like, no, nah, dude, that shit's not cool, dude. That shit's not hard enough. <laughs> you know, like back in those days, it used to be like, oh, uh, it's not, I still have that. I still have a little bit of, when I show the music I listen to to people, um, I still have that like, back in the day thing it's like oh shit it's got clean singing in it oh god hopefully they like it (laughs) like i still it still hangs with me to this day it's it's a trip well let it go dude you it's (laughs) it's literally like dude it's all for you now dude come on no 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 but i still i'm just saying coming up on 40 but i'm saying it's still sprinkled in there and it's it's not hasn't gone away fully that's all i'm saying have you guys uh... yeah go ahead Sorry, I was trying to segue to this. Just, no, just because I, this dude, this this band has floored me recently. But have you guys heard of uh, Convulsing? No. Mm-mm. All right. Uh, have you guys heard convulsion. of? Uh, no, Convulsing. Okay. Have Mm-mm. you guys heard of Alters? That band from Australia. Mm-mm. So it's like, like in Australia. Though. Like, and he's still on it, dude. Dissonant, like black and death metal. Uh, but okay, his he has a solo project called Convulsing. Just put okay. out an album called Perdurance last week, and that has been the only thing I've been listening to. And it's like, uh, man, dude, it's it's just really refreshing, dissonant, well calculated death metal. Uh, everything about it is fucking perfect, dude. Like, uh, I'm so down to listen to it. Yeah, you ever heard of Steely Dan? It's only on man. <laughs> it's only on. It's only on man camp. Like I, I, I wish I could send you the link right now, but dude, like I'm this preaching. Band on preaching this YouTube. album, dude. It's so fucking sick. Pendurance. Yes. Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's on Pendurance. YouTube. Oh, cool. So they're yeah, love. Well, um, yeah, dude. Oh, that's a cool. Oh, insane, shit. insane, dude. Like. You got weird. No, 
You got you got you got wavy. You got there. weird vocally. You got the Your matrix audio there. got tripped out for a second. Oh no! But in the beginning, it's kind of like new metally. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and then it gets it, into something crazy. Like yeah. I'm listening to it right now. Dude, <laughs> yeah. highly recommend. Highly recommend. Cool. I'm stuck. I think I'll dissonance is the the answer to um, expansion. I think yeah. that dissonance is literally those types of bands is the next stage of the progression of this thing that we continuously we're talking about wanting more and more and more everything's getting faster and faster i want the the sicker sicker stuff and i think that that is like folded back into you know the bands that want to produce new things and i think that the dissonance and you know gore guts and all that stuff being the the like seed of all that in the extreme metal i think that that is where things can get more interesting because everybody says everything's already been done and and i kind of feel that way in a sense when you want to listen to just straight death metal Damn, yes. Anthony, you, you hear this band, you'll, you'll love it. It's actually got the, you said gore guts, as I'm hearing the gore, gore guts part right now. <laughs> yeah, see? And I, I think that um, things can just get more rich with that, you know, going down that path and whatever fruits they may find walking that path, you know? Um, I, I enjoy listening to everything that i've already been exposed to but the os dm stuff kind of there's a few acts that still would grab my attention and i'm like oh shit this is awesome but what do you guys think about that like like trying to emulate the past because we kind of are already exhausting everything we've already used up until this point so i mean, I, I totally get what you're saying about that dissonant stuff being like could be the new wave you know because it's like you know anybody could just make noise or just weird shit or whatever but it's like how well can you put it together where it's like it, it actually sounds like a vibe you know what i mean yeah that yeah. it it uh, what i'm what you're getting at and what i what i'm trying to say too is that this this new layer of things is added to where now it's it's more than just music on a certain level on certain bands or whatever where it's now a like a a soundscape it's 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 like your the the atmosphere is is actually listenable that causes with with or without substances visuals while you're listening to it i feel like i'm in a place that's when i listen to certain bands i try and i mean listening in darkness and closing your eyes and trying to be in a different place while you're listening to certain bands you can get there dude and i think that um atmosphere is something that might be what takes us our it's already moving in that direction what are we talking about it's like it, it it's going to be the next thing it's already a thing dude we've it's been there for a while <laughs> but i think that that's the stuff that at our age is what's going to excite us is the yeah. outer fringe that that can excite us it's it again going back to the drug thing you do too many drugs too much dude it's not going to be as exciting it's like so uh, we're, <laughs> we're looking for the excitement it's like anything that sounds like the death tones it's not the death tones that's what i'm trying <laughs> to gravitate towards <laughs> right it's, it's just like you know 
if you can have an involuntary reaction to music that's all i'm looking for is for music yeah. to make me feel something emotionally when i wasn't planning on it because i could put on sad music all day and plan to be sad while i'm listening to it you could plan that out i'm looking for something that that invokes emotion while i'm driving to work and i didn't realize i was gonna get teared up yeah fuck or yeah. realize i wasn't gonna fucking headbang until i fucking almost ran off the road or missed the red light you know um, those yeah. things is what i'm looking for now at my age yeah i agree i don't know i, I can no man that, that's that's honestly perfectly said like is, I, it, is anthony I just making it. statements and not letting anyone <laughs> no man i mean i, I you, made, you made a good point man it's just like you know at, at our age we just want like to feel something dude it's like it's not about holy fuck he played that crazy arpeggio i don't give a fuck about that anymore i just want to nah. like yeah you oh you made me fucking feel weird for five seconds cool i'll keep and i wasn't planning band. on it you know like like yeah. Justin, like how how like when you hear a sweep, like a crazy sweep now, you're just like, what whatever, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's so played out now. You're just like it's like once you learn that trick, you're yeah. like, all right, yeah. I, I like to go back to, you know, like the stuff that like influenced all that stuff though, you know. So I'll I'll get on these deep dives where, you know, I'm gonna go listen to like, you know, um perpetual burn and uh all that stuff, and it's just like Fuck yeah. Nothing impresses me now because I go back and this was done in you know the eighties. Way whatever. before all this. Yeah, yeah. Jason yeah. Becker and Marty Freeman. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And it's like I don't know. I, I, and even like with death metal, I've been kind of going back to um, you know, like you know, late eighties, early nineties, and and that's speaking to me more now um than it did, I guess, you know, early on. Like uh incantation onward to Golgotha. I've been listening to that one and mm -hmm. um you know, just and I, and I've also been listening to like because I've I, I kind of dabble with like some electronic shit, um, mm -hmm. not, like you know, like you mentioned, like Igor and stuff like that. That stuff's pretty yeah. cool. Um, but I went back and listened to like Godflesh, uh, you know, Street Cleaner, that kind of stuff, and nice, you know, to kind of see where industrial and you know things like that were kind of we're archaeologists, but, audio archaeologists, dude. Yeah, and I just kind of tap into that and and you appreciate it a little more when you you know go back in time there and um but yeah uh i don't know it's it's like i'm i feel like this is like cliche and it's like i'm old and i'm going back to the shit i was listening to before and I, nothing impresses me but there is some really killer music out there there is so, yeah for sure um you just got to look for it and no you know, for sure open mind well actually you know what one thing that bums me out nowadays about just my mentality and i think a lot of people are on the same wavelength as this because of the easy access to music nowadays is that a new album would drop and it'll be like fucking did you hear the new blah, blah blah it's the sickest and then a week later you're like you just stop listening to it like <laughs> you're like oh let's move on to the next thing because like mm -hmm. it used to be like we had to go grab it from like put a trip in go to the fucking record store grab it and now it's on our CD player. When we get in our car, it's playing. You know, now it's like, oh, dude, it's you know, I like this, but like, I want to hear a Depeche Mode song right now. <laughs> like, you could be like whatever you want. You could just do whatever you want. Like, it's not you're not, you're not as connected to the yeah. like record anymore. I mean, you it's still like, can is, be, but it's not the same. A hundred percent. It used to be like investing in a record where it's like, all right, well, I paid for this. It's in my CD player, and now this is what I'm listening to. This is all I'm listening to for a while. And uh, now it's like, oh yeah, they came out with a new album three weeks ago. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's like, I, it I still enjoy. Out. I still enjoy curating my six disc CD changer, dude. Every now and then, just like, oh, you what, have one of six, those? Yeah, dude. I drive a two thousand four truck, bro. What <laughs> up, dude? It doesn't even have an auxiliary in it, dude. <laughs> yeah, my dope. six CD disc changer, dude. And I fucking yeah. curate my six disc <laughs> thing per week, dude. <laughs> There's that usually, would be a big that'd be a big move for like a big a car. sanity record in there it'd be like a big move for like a car a car maker just be like no dude we're doing cd players again fuck you it's like and that's yeah. it dude it's like just a cd player it would actually probably spike cd sales you know there's 
but we want things so quickly and so fast now it's it's, it's probably half yeah. hip-hop two death metal and then like one jungle or jazz record that's literally what the six <laughs> cd combination would be and yeah i've gotten to a point too what kind of sucks where i'm like i just want to hear this song and then this song and then this song by this band and then this song, like i don't want to hear whole albums i'm like i don't want to yeah. i don't have time for it i'm taking a shower i put i put the only place i have an alexa is in my shower and i'm like uh play this song i'm just in the mood for it's like kind of like a wake up for like work i'm just like play a fucking aggressive or a mellow song or what i'm feeling at the time and like i just i get it on my voice i'm just like play this song in whatever i want plays <laughs> it's like it's getting to the point where it kind of kills the uh the old art that we were all ex- you know excited about when we were younger but um also you know i randomly went into a slater phase through my shower alexa was like play war ensemble and i was like oh my god this is so good <laughs> like, <laughs> like i forgot how good slayer was you know that's how <laughs> jaded i got for a while I was like slayer like old slayer is gr- like one of the best bands i've ever heard for metal like and i even was like working on um just doing work from home and i was like i'm just gonna relearn some of these slayer songs and my arm was fucking worn the fuck out i was like damn i need to like work on this forearm strength like (laughs) you know they didn't fuck around no they're just like like the whole time and yeah much respect to those guys fucking keeping that forearm alive you know what i'm saying (laughs) but do you guys like metal or (laughs) (laughs) i don't even i have no idea where we're at we've gotten off into the weeds we we don't have joseph or uh casey to tell us to fucking get back out of the weeds so now we're deep in this shit. I don't even know. Did we finish with Danny? Did no, Danny have a thought? No, I was just gonna say. Uh, uh, we we just played Savannah, Georgia. What, Justin? Like fucking nine days ago or something. Awesome. Um, but it was it was just a one and done show. First time I seen uh, Justin in, in a minute. Pretty much the first time all of us have seen each other in a minute. And I remember uh, at the end of the show, you were saying you were like, uh. I mean, like, spoiler alert, whatever the fuck, but you, you were like, you were like, dude, for this new shit, I just want old school fucking 90s death metal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember being, like, so stoked. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty sloshed. I was. I was. <laughs> and stoked. Sloshed and stoked. You know. I remember back then, nine days ago, where I was so stoked to hear that. And, dude, I don't, I don't see you. I like you. Guys. I, I don't see you often, so I just wanted you to elaborate more on that. Can you please tell us and the fans what is uh, yes. what is up, dude? Please. Yeah, Real quick, before you go into it, brother. I want to say that that's so cool to like get excited about something after a show. Because how how long have you guys played a show before that? How long before that? It was like oh, last June. We went out yeah, with Warforged, actually. Like eight months or something. Okay, so yeah, it's been. You guys a while, took a dude. break though. Was there was there like a significant break with you guys? Yeah, the COVID break. So yeah. oh, okay, I think okay. it was like three. Well, there was a break that everybody longer took. break before that too. And yeah, and then the five year. <laughs> and then the five year, <laughs> the COVID break. I think and it was the after that. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Too, actually, was it after <laughs> the half a decade before work? that too, dude? Yeah, no. After the suffer was, uh, yeah, that was a while. Damn. No, dude, we, I mean, uh, we released uh, Desomus in 2017, so that was a. I think 2011 was that Suffo tour, right? 2010, 2011, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think 2010, dude. Damn. Yeah, I know. But, uh, 14 years ago, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy, dude. It feels like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, it feels <laughs> like maybe six. I'll give it six. Not like what 14. A, it's still my favorite tour. Like that, yeah, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. I mean, just so many awesome bands every single night, and then like cool people too coming out every night because obviously it's an awesome package. Definitely, so was that fun. was good times, man. I think it might have been the last tour I did with Decrepit. That might have been the last tour I did with Decrepit. Chase was doing uh, guitar. Yeah, Chase. Uh, he did a couple, uh, two or three tours I was on. But yeah, that might have been the last one. Chase yeah. Randomosity, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was kind of my farewell. I was kind of like doing my finances going like, all right, so do you want like homelessness 
<laughs> or do you want? It was what like seems those... more appeasing, <laughs> <laughs> or like being kind of miserable after two weeks on tour? Because <laughs> like, for me, I was always like, I love tour, but I was always kind of, I, I'm like one of those like warriors about back home. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck's gonna be? And I'm living in one of the most expensive places in the United States. I'm like, sick dude. Like, what am I gonna do if I don't well, make enough money? Well, yeah. my resume for shitting in a bag is pretty strong. My <laughs> portfolio is pretty, pretty <laughs> powerful yeah. there. You, div- you, div- you diversified your dumps, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's trip that death metal dudes literally get paid in memories. That's yeah, literally dude. what it is, dude. The finances yeah. we never really get paid in, so we're trying to get paid in memories. And you guys are saying, I'll never forget that too. We're all never- we all yeah. have that one that... that it, that's our that's our uh bank account our death metal bank account dude absolutely just, just man. those those memories dude is is and we're gonna we're never gonna sell those memories fuck that dude that that yeah. shit stays in the bank account and let it yep. get a little interest dude yeah i'll keep coming back every week and be like oh dude is that one still there oh it's still there dude yeah <laughs> dude, that was sick dude chasing joel through fucking saratoga springs on his birthday <laughs> you know that's still there <laughs> him falling down the stairs that's still there yeah and trying not to get arrested it's still there <laughs> that's still there <laughs> we, we, we had so many of those uh those memories we were talking about when we were hanging out uh during that savannah show it's just so fun, it's man. Like, so much fun just to like re- reminisce about all of them and get together and like talk to yeah. them. Like it's like it's the biggest smiles you probably have in your life, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. talking about that like shit. That you know? Otep tour. <laughs> Otep. You went on tour with Otep. Bro, we oh, toured with Otep for fucking 40, what, three days, 44 days? Damn. Wow. What's up with, heck, okay, dude? okay. I know we're on a podcast, but like what's up with that singer? I always hear she's like kind of rude. I don't know. I don't know. I, you don't have to say anything, but I'm just saying uh, that I, I uh, hear nah, I, like, I mean, okay. <laughs> Sorry. If, if, if that tour happened today. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God, what a political uproar it would be because of uh, the old type singer. Like, I, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, just. <laughs> fuck her, sorry, dude. I, she I'm was sorry. crazy, dude. Like, <laughs> That's what everyone told me. She's crazy. So anyways. Even her bandmates were like, even her bandmates were like, yeah, we're not allowed to uh, walk uh, past her in the in the tour bus, uh, crotch facing her. She won't allow it. Like, oh my oh god, my dude, god. dude, people and in that the was chat. 2010. Can you imagine fucking now? <laughs> oh my god, we got we got a question from the chat. Did they let you sell merch on that tour? I don't know, man. No, nah, we, we sold merch. You have to you have to probably price match, right? Probably. I don't remember. They, they let us get a $350 guarantee a night. <laughs> okay, that's, you know, that's, you know. That's not, I mean, uh, 2010, I mean, you know, inflation. Uh, you know, inflation, I got to factor inflation. <laughs> when you start bringing in inflation, that's when you know, oh, these guys got raped. And, and that's, that's her name, just really, right? It was that's a her name, tour. right? So she, yeah, it was her yeah, name, dude. That's her name. And the best part about it is that we toured with uh, Bury Your Dead, who were fucking sick they they made like that tour fun thank god for them and uh mike terry was like had a fall dude it was just like a rivalry with her the entire time which was like <laughs> more amusing oh so amusing. Was, yeah. yeah that was a cool tour just because of where you're dead there yeah. was i think Very on that dead. tour we were yeah, on was dead. uh the, the the frank mullen we did we play new the new england and hardcore festival or it was palladium somewhere i think that might have been where we started off but i remember a story where frank <laughs> from suffo just got like lit and went on all that remains buses a bus and had to get like dragged off in a headlock because <laughs> 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 he was just like blacked out on there just going, Fuck, Sick. <laughs> so, we're like, fucking he ended up on all that really? remains bus. That's... I know. all the way to the top were the misfits of music <laughs> dude <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i miss dude. like that was the problems like that was like that was like our adult problems it was like dude frank got ripped off a bus like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's like we're all like you fucking could, 40 you now mend- like, you, you could know. say any other person we know oh they got headlocked off of a fucking bus we all have that story and it's fucking frank you're talking about <laughs> so it goes all the way to the top dude jeez 
all the way to the top. It's just like we're, you guys, you guys, like, raging, I mean, dude. you guys had some of the most entertaining stories out of any tour I've ever been on, like with the whole whiskey incident and then Mike, like the Pomona incident with Mike and uh, with Michael, like there was like in a brawl and like he, he was like, I remember, I just remember like these like huge guys were like, no, fuck you, dude. And he's and Mike just like beat up like humongous people <laughs> by himself. <laughs> and he's like yes. a skinny dude. <laughs> I'm like, yes. what the fuck is going on? Yes, but that dude is. I was like, that guy will go to the death if once he gets challenged. That guy is to the death. So that guy is fuck yeah. Like, and same with you. I remember, like you, you had like there was times with you. I was you were like, what the fuck? I was like, Jesus, brother. <laughs> like you guys were fucking like rowdy, two rowdy motherfuckers, and I loved it. And I, and <laughs> and those are the fucking memories I have. Like for most of touring, were like you guys, like like fucking around. That was like. Dude. Every everybody on that tour was so cool though and down to earth. Definitely, I, I remember uh, one of the first days. I think because th that tour started out in Canada, right, Justin? I don't think so. No, are we talking about the wait? Which the which Suffle one? Suffle, Flesh God, Faceless. There was a Canada we... run in that, right? Well, I, I feel like that was in the beginnings because we were all still getting a know each other nobody was really talking and i remember flesh god was especially like not really talking to anybody because of the language barrier and whatnot yeah and i remember uh uh fuck why am i drawing blank bill from uh decrepit he was mm -hmm. he was like making like his own beans or something he was making his own right. burrito or something so he's yep. like he's like he's like whipping this pot and he just keeps whipping it and then the, the flesh god guys one of the guys goes up to him he's like cocaina <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I don't know why. That was like the first thing he said the entire tour. <laughs> Dude, how how funny were the flesh guy guys? They were like in the back, like you know, they had their language barrier and stuff, but they like they they sounded like they were yelling at each other all the time. They're like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. like, I was like, what's going on? They're like, oh, we're just talking. <laughs> Dude, it's normal. <laughs> and I was Dude, like, it sounds like you guys are screaming at each other. If we toured again with those guys, like I would hang out with them nonstop just because of my love for the Sopranos. You know what oh, I yeah. mean? Like I could not stop hanging out with these guys. Dude. Yeah. Death I saw them in Italy. Dude. I saw them kind of, I mean, maybe about three or four years ago and drummer was the singer, the guy that writes all the music. I forget his yeah. goddamn name. Fran Francesco. He was, he was the singer and dude put on a performance that I was like jaw on the ground. Like it was, you know, like like a spotlight on him, and he was telling the whole crowd he's got a guitar, and he's like commanding the crowd. And in between songs, there's like classical music playing, and then it would just drop into a song. And it was like a it was a masterful performance. And I went yeah, backstage right. and was like, "Dude, the what the fuck!" And he was the drummer. He was like trying to learn how to play drums on that tour. Remember, he was like trying to. He was like sitting there the whole time, like practicing yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And yeah, he, he had another band where he did vocals for. Yes, what's that fucking band called? It started start with an h or something like oh my god it's hour of penance hour of penance jesus christ yeah yeah dude was just like a freak of nature was like no yeah. i need to learn the drums at 280 beats a minute well, <laughs> that's, like Phillip, that's like philip from last week just had to learn how to play guitar left-handed just because his fucking wrist was fucked up on his picking hand it's so justin yeah, that... how would you approach that like like learning guitar left-handed to me it's you're starting at zero like like yeah, to me making a g chord it. i'd give up immediately yeah <laughs> like it's insane like it's... isn't that wild i said that most dudes would do that but he now plays a dual neck guitar <laughs> he's like i can't pick i can't pick with a hand anymore i'll just do this but yeah that's uh that's a trip, man. Seeing Flesh God, though, how they progressed and stuff, and seeing them, I was like, whoa! Like, they're set from that tour, what we toured on, which was great. They were awesome. But, like, seeing them kind of recently, when they are got all their shit together with the piano player and all the things, I was like, holy shit, you guys are, like, a legit, like, top-of-the-line death metal band. Like, Is there any... Even... Uh, calling out to everybody who's listening to this, is there a death metal band that comes from Sicily? There's Italian bands, but I want to know about a, a sick death metal band from Sicily. That's where Sicily it's sick. It is, dude. The Trapanese from there, dude. That's, that's selfish, we, dude. 
Jesus. Nah, dude. If if there's a death metal band from Trapani, Sicily, how sick would that be, dude? I think we, I think we got one here. It's uh, Alien Ant Farm. <laughs> dude, I used to play you bass for the that. Bass dude. player. <laughs> um, I look exactly like the bass player in that video. In that uh, people have sent me so many screenshots, and it looks like it looks almost exactly the it's same. Very, like, it's scary. Like they definitely are at least siblings, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's insane. <laughs> no, that's no, he's actually a great bass player too. He plays for like yeah, huge bands now. Not lot, not that Alien Ant Farm wasn't that big, but they you know they did a Michael Jackson cover and they got big. But um, so back to uh, <laughs> through the eyes of the dead. <laughs> um, so so back uh, through the eyes of the dead. So da so Danny, how did you run into Justin? How how did you become connected with them? And how did you even join that? Um. Man, uh, so uh, I, I just got out of high school. Uh, I initially tried out for the Faceless. Uh, they didn't dig it. And uh, I remember being, like, bummed. And uh, one of my buddies, he's like, dude, through the eyes, he's a vocalist. Try out for them. So this was back in the MySpace days. I remember messaging them on MySpace and being like, hey, guys, uh, some people say I sound like Nate Johnson. Um, can I try out for you? And they're like, okay, submit X, Y, and Z. So I did some, uh, uh, recorded some songs. And then I remember it was just like a, a major sweat fest because it was me and two other guys. And I remember uh, Jake and Justin both being like, hey, man, it's tight. It's tight. You know, can you send more? Can you send more? And uh, so they <clears throat> inevitably ended up going with another guy. And I remember being like soul crushed, dude. Like, fuck, man. Like, that was, that was, we were it, about to, know? um, we were about to tour with Whitechapel. Um, mm -hmm. and they recommended this guy that was like local and he was pretty sick. Um, but he didn't work out. Uh, but we did choose him initially. And <laughs> then we were like, hey, Danny. Dude, the, the, the funny thing about that story is like I was crushed and and like I think two days later I was hanging out with some of my good friends and we were just like in the backyard drinking and uh I, I was you know I was like drinking a lot I was like man dude I almost had it dude I almost had it they're like yeah yeah it's all good man like you'll figure it out or whatever and then I remember Jake hit me up that night and he's like hey can you be in Virginia tomorrow? I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, uh, yeah. Can you can you be in Virginia tomorrow? I'm like, yeah. And then, uh, dude, I had I was 18 years old. I had like 450 dollars in my savings account. Yeah. The, the ticket cost me 400 dollars. I told my parents, Ooh, I was like, yo, shit. opportunity of a lifetime. I'm flying out to Virginia tonight. Yeah. Just to like, try out. Yeah. And they were like, are you sure? Yeah. I'm like. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Damn. Flew out, did the thing. It, it ended up being cool. And then we were in Virginia. We ended up going and seeing uh, Journey that night. So, like, my tryout. And then that night, we all saw Journey as a band. And uh, it was just a fucking good time. We had a great time. And I remember uh, the next day, they were like, yo, dude, uh, we want you to do this run. And, dude, nice. like, it was like I won the fucking lottery, bro. Like hell yeah, dude. I remember being like, "Fuck yeah, no more nine to five. You have to do what I love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know no millions I mean? of dollars." Like, yeah, <laughs> I remember that feeling, bro. Like yeah, like, like man, it was literally like winning the fucking lottery. Totally. So, yeah, that was that, uh, that's how it started, man. MySpace. MySpace. That's I remember. Uh, Jared from Archaic was uh, working at some like a big five kind of place and he found out that he got signed a unique leader <laughs> like and he was like he's like i'm out like <laughs> mama I got, mama i've won it's like i'm gonna make like 700 dollars a year dude like I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah it's I, I, I didn't get, yeah i didn't get to that part where i was like dude i'm fucking hundred thousand dollars a year doing what i love <laughs> 
<laughs> One, I owe a hundred dollars. <laughs> How cool is the MySpace era? We're talking about the MySpace era, though. It's like yeah. that was that first uh, quick networking situation in the underground. Yeah, we didn't even yeah. know what it was. It was we just email knew that, like, before was that, and then before yeah. that, it was snail mail, all that shit. So yeah. it was our first, uh, as humans, introduction to getting instant gratification when it comes to whether or not you're you you make contact with somebody. Oh shit, dude! I got this person's my top friend now. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite yeah, band's yeah, top, top eight? Friends. Top eight, dude. What's yeah. your favorite band's top eight? That's how I found all my bands. Totally. No, we got, we got on Alex Webster's. Oh, Odie's got on Alex Webster's top it eight and the Job for Cowboy. That ever happened to me eight. in my life, dude. And they were like, <laughs> Job for Cowboy was the biggest band on, on MySpace. Yeah. So it was like the fact that we got on, they like put us at the top. They were like number one. And I was like messaging with them. They're like, dude, you guys are a huge influence on us. So I'm like, Holy shit, these guys are like massive. Like, what the fuck is going on right now? Just getting yeah, that kind of that like was a weird thing. That no notoriety <clears throat> through social media, which was wasn't called social media, it was called MySpace. And right. we just knew that we like they had to move us there and be like, Yeah, these guys. And we're like, Yes, us. And everybody knew Tom, <laughs> dude. Everybody knew Tom. Tom, everyone had Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a trippy That's time. Like, you could uh, that was like death metal stock market right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they just got yeah. into the top eight. Oh man. Top yeah. Oh, the, <laughs> and then they remember they added like the top sixteen. They're like, ah, oh, come on, dude. They don't have the <laughs> top sixteen. <laughs> they already curated my eight, dude. Now I gotta add eight more. And then if you're like, if you're the sixteenth, if you're the sixteenth on someone's top sixteen, you're like, ah, oh, dude, we're the last one they thought of, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd, yeah, still that be, was... I'd still like to be in number 16 on Alex Webster's list, though, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. Out of no. all of it. That was like, that was that we've made it. Bef I mean, we, we were signed and stuff, and like we're putting out, we put out an album and stuff, but having Alex Webster and. Well, like, we got uh, the Willowtip gig because of MySpace. Um, it wasn't uh jason it was fuck now i'm missing his name he's the guy i talked to the most and i forget his name but the guy who found us for willow tip found us on myspace with the demo uh the kitchen demo that's what it was okay okay no, i remember yeah. i was working at a uh, circuit city and uh when i was doing all, like during the touring times and we like we were on unique leader at the time and they had sony distribution they had good distribution and uh, i remember working there and uh they had our album at circuit city <laughs> yeah. they had our album there and i was working there selling tvs making you know like 13 bucks an hour or whatever and uh People are like, "What the fuck? Your albums here? Like, why are you here? Like, what? Why aren't you like famous? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. Why don't you have like... somebody here for you buying <laughs> the album? <laughs> it's like, dude, if you if you buy that, we get like three cents, dude. <laughs> so I don't know if that's gonna really... <laughs> like rents more than that. Just FYI, you guys have that in that that situation where you the first time you went into a record store and saw your own shit." Yeah, that's yeah, a cool that's feeling, cool. right? Who's got? Very tell us your cool. stories. Come on. Um, I just remember going and seeing our shit used and being like, "Damn, <laughs> used the right. used yeah. one. dude." The that 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 one hits you. I yeah, it's like, I've damn. experienced that one as well. Got to hang it up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or or like a fan sending you a picture. Hey, look what I found at fucking Amoeba four ninety nine, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Yeah. But in reality, a lot of those people were probably just buying albums, burning them, and then returning them. The burn and return, dude. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of MySpace, I remember when um we uh basically we were about to like embark on our like first like tours and stuff. And I remember like things getting like a little weird when like certain bands would have like was it like more friends or whatever and like <laughs> it's like oh they pay for theirs and and it's oh, like oh yeah or, or they can like you know i guess edit something and i don't know there was like this whole thing but i remember like being a little salty you know like job for a cowboy or like suicide silence back then it's like man mm -hmm. they're like 
they're fucking huge and like we'll never be that big because we don't have that many myspace friends <laughs> yeah. dude i remember i actually found a script because i'm like a computer nerd and i found a script that like would add people automatically yeah just, like all day long and like I, I was like, dude, we're gonna be fucking huge when I run this shit. <laughs> I like, was like, I'll that never do that. Be... This is, everything's gonna be organic, and <laughs> like it yeah. fucking mattered. I was like, dude, I found the fucking. None of it matters. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, I found the fucking hack, dude. Just like press this button, <laughs> and then we're gonna be famous. Dude. It's gonna be super easy. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then later oh, on, so dude, like people are fucking buying friends. I'm like, no, we never tried that. I don't stupid so dumb no. I never would do that. the thing is guys <laughs> and and it's it's tacky and and whatever but it's the truth which is you just keep doing what you're doing and keep making it the best it can be and then eventually it's just gonna find its people and then those people are gonna fucking spread it throughout the internet and that's how you're actually gonna spread you're not gonna fucking buy fans dude no maybe some people do it, i mean i, I don't give a shit now like but i, I mean back the then no, I, 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 when i was 20 i maybe cared a little like bit more. a band buying fans i want to know what their percent what their what their payback is on oh, no, there's like bots you know there's like farms of like people or of i know but uh, what do you get back like... as true fans well, they just want numbers. They, just, they, they don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't give a shit. No, they're not making any money. They just want like you the show. And, yeah, yeah, they will, it's like yeah. Because I remember like because I work with like a metal blade every now and then. They're like, "What's the new band we need to sign?" I uh, my buddy works for them, and I'm like, "I'll I'll throw them some bands." They're like, "Not enough likes." <laughs> like you know, like not Crazy, enough follows right? and shit. And I'm like, "But dude, they're the sickest, and you're gonna end up regretting it later." But at the time of what they want, at the moment of what metal blade's looking for is like. You know, like they want. They're looking for commercials, dude. They yeah, got to. The, yeah, they're not trying to. They're not trying to like in front of people. Yeah, they're not trying to like be like sick, dude. We'll sign them and then do a full marketing campaign to get them like seen. Like they want to already have that part taken taken care of. They don't want to, you know, yeah, especially nowadays. Good, and that, and bands like Zoth, I always talk about it. But there's a band called Zoth that we had on a few times, and they're love them. Like, yeah, so rad. But I was just thinking have, about them today. <laughs> yeah, they they they've they've done the whole like we're not signing to labels thing, and they've stuck to it, and they found ways to make deals and agreements with labels for distribution. They're not, they won't do it, and and they're becoming like so self sufficient that labels will be like, all right, we'll we'll do a deal with you. Like it's not like their their music is theirs, and they they want that. That's like their number one gig is to keep their music theirs. But they'll work with labels right. across the world and just be like, and United States just be like, you can distribute it, but like we're gonna get them more of the cut and blah blah. Like, and and that would have never happened in the past, but now because of streaming and how much you know, like they want a piece of it. They're like, cool, we'll we'll get a piece of it. Like we don't want to, you know, take all the royalties and stuff with you guys. If you guys don't want to do that, we'll just uh, we'll just take a little handshake deal and get your music out and we'll get a piece of it and we'll make money you'll make money it'll be all good rather than like it used because it's always been the whole story of like you need to be signed to make you have to be signed dude if you're not signed then yeah. go fuck yourself go fuck your yeah. mother if you're not signed like <laughs> you know yeah there's too many resources to deal already <laughs> oh no we're not we're not we're we're we don't dude, care not, we're like, yeah, if we had no jobs, then that would be a different thing. It's like back in the like the nineties. We're signing like, just for the distribution because we're not going on any tours. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to like sign and be like, "Yeah, dude, you own all of it." I don't give a shit. Just show it to people. <laughs> I remember uh, Rude Awakening though when um, we first got signed to Prosthetic because I was like, I thought like once you get signed, it's like this big thing and like yeah, yeah. right, like yeah, we all had that. I'm like i'm never gonna work a fucking job i'm a musician now and um <laughs> but i get a uh this was during the aim days uh i get an instant uh, message yeah. uh from ej at prosthetic and his screen name was super satan i'll never forget and he was basically like hey like you know um have you guys uh you know thought about putting something else out and it's like he's like this is ej from prosthetic and i'm like on aim 
Like, <laughs> isn't this supposed to be like a, a phone call? Aren't you supposed to like fly me to LA? And like, yeah. <laughs> 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 and he's just from McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up getting on the phone, and it's like this dude's like, he signed like Lamb of God, and like you know he's like yeah. instant messaging me, and <laughs> it was just like okay. <laughs> I see so where this is going. Same thing, dude. But yeah, I've <laughs> talked to, I won't mention names, but I've talked to a couple of bigger labels and, and had that same feeling like, oh, dude, we're just this, we're just humans, dude. We're just, <laughs> this guy wants to talk on the phone. And I'm like, oh, shit, I want to talk on the phone too, dude. I don't like text messaging that much, you know? He's actually hitting me. It, I'm, I'm just like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm talking to this human. But, I remember the the next level from like the signing though that you're talking about, like when you think it's all over, like signing was Ash Advilson taking us out to like a nice dinner, with the crap and being like, and being like, so you guys want to do this for a living? And I'm like, <laughs> fuck yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, let's do it for a living. And uh, you know, I was like, I was, like, hype pitch, I was like calling my dad, just going, like, dude. <laughs> it's like dude i went from 600 dollars a month to 800 bucks a month dude. If you want to like i didn't know that was the actual that what would happen but like at the time i was like dude we got the big dog was feeling like you guys want to do it for a living you guys you guys in do it for a living i was like that's why we're fucking here dog like yeah. of course we do but we totally like bit the the bait going like yeah 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 to like not like <laughs> no questions just like yeah totally that's what we're here for but uh but yeah, it's like, it's like the one up from the signing is like getting the 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 touring agent or the the booking agent to be like, dude. So I'm thinking about like booking you guys so you can make a living on this. I was like, yeah. And it, the reality is like, hey, dad, I just signed a contract that literally makes me the least uh, beneficial part of this whole thing. You know. I remember when we um, did our first record for Prosthetic, uh, they, um, you know, gave us an advance for the uh, recording and we hadn't even signed the contract yes. yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it was already paid for, ready to go. And I, we had like a lawyer get involved um, to do the deal. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not signing this contract. I'm like, dude, they already like paid the for deal. the recording. Like, he's like, well, that's on them. And I was like, but we have to like do this and he's like no like we have to renegotiate and blah 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 and i'm like no man like <laughs> <laughs> there's a fucking nfl contract <laughs> yeah i know it's like the label just be like nah we're not gonna negotiate we're done we're out. <laughs> yeah it's fucking it's stupid dude i was gonna say some other words right there but it's stupid dude and and what it is is that's yeah we're just uh, guys like me and joel are saying hey uh we still want to make art uh, we're just like solidifying the possibility that it gets distributed but really the internet is just a place to distribute so um, what the fuck are we doing <laughs> I see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I got the link from Justin, and I decided to. We're, we hit three hours. And let's I feel do like it, dude. Need, let's watch dude it. I, I watched this. I watched like five seconds of it, and it's like actually on a TV show. And there's the, a Baldwin reacting to it, and everything. It's I gotta cool. watch dude. it, dude. All right. All right I, should screen. I mute? Is that? No, dude. no, we're good. We're, right. Let's, let's death, do this. Death by true TV jokes. Oh shit. Who looks like Janet Joplin? Get thrown out of a bar. What did the bouncer do to piss these goth guys off so much? Goth. Oh, Danny's right there. Danny fell down right there, right? You're... Yeah. Yeah, he almost got his head run over. Somebody gets run over by a truck. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. New sample. Dude, I remember that shit. Yeah, you got run over. And my camera's not broke either. Oh my god. 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 Oh my
And they just sent you on your way with a cast? Well, I walked away. Uh, okay. In, mostly uh, in, in adrenaline and fright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I called the, well, somebody called the cops. They showed up and do anything for him. And they were like, call the fucking firefighters. They'll show up and they'll, they'll get you straight. <laughs> and then uh, they showed up and they basically <laughs> took two cardboard box slabs and uh, ice and tape and put my hand in it. And they're like, all right, now walk your ass to the nearest emergency room. Basically. We, uh, I'll try to do it in slow motion. Is there a slow motion? Let's see. So you're talking about the producers of this show put you in cardboard and said, no, it's not the show. The, the, oh. they just, no, 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 no. It's not. <laughs> The Illuminati didn't try to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, it, dude. Okay, right. watch. We'll do, we'll do slow motion here because because he falls. Watch. <laughs> it's funny. I'm slow. We got a juggalo. Sorry. All right. Where are you, Danny? Right here. Where are you? Uh, I think that's me right there in the top right left, just entering okay, okay. the frame. Like, <laughs> look at this stupid shit. You just got like tackled with it, right? No, man. I just like walked past. <laughs> really? And then Dan, Dan, Daniel Baldwin tried to kill me. Dude. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a Daniel Baldwin, dude. Let's see. You know what okay. the fuck happens? You get ran over by a fucking GMC you... guy when you try to make money. Let's see. Playing a death metal show. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right here. Yeah, that's me right there. That's you right there. Okay. So okay. you, you're just standing there. Yeah, yeah just you're standing there. Uh, what standing is happening yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. left of me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just staring you, you, at the screen. You don't even line. know what's going on. I'm really what's going on. You're just like, fuck, dude. You probably yeah, had a smell or something. Yeah, 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 drinks, didn't you? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh fuck, just knocked dude. under a truck that's moving. Can we just. Okay. And then he gets ran over right there. Shout out to oh Hank. My God, uh, he's, dude. He's our, uh, rhythm guitar player on that tour. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, so like when mothers uh, see their uh, infant in harm, they they get like superhuman powers. That's exactly what happened here. Uh, Was that Hank who lifted the or tried to lift the truck up? Yeah, you can't see it off frame because it's like it's like two hundred and forty you know whatever but hank actually lifted that uh gmc up about 10 feet in the air hank loved me that much that he actually lifted it about uh, 12 feet in the air hank yeah, dude, sounds familiar i'm Is talking it, it, my right life? now but i still have anxiety for you in this video was you that the guitar player hank was that the other guitar player yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh he was like a quiet kind of nerdy guy yeah, right? again, again, superhuman strength. Nobody would know it, but I'm so he picked, he was he picked a shredder, dude. No, he dude, up... I'm, I'm joking. Oh, he no, just, he didn't do anything. He, he just like, he, he obviously, he's like, <laughs> he was a stop. Like, uh. He was screaming at the driver, stop. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, yeah. you are, you are like inches away from death right here. Yes, dude. That's what you were telling me the next day. Oh, this is him right but here. Look, hey, do it. Yeah. Thank you. See this? Guy? Holy shit, dude. I never realized that. Oh, I love how fuck. lo-fi this shit is, dude. Like he just <laughs> know, looks like a fucking like Zelda <laughs> character. Just, I don't think he changed out of those clothes that entire tour. Yeah. I want to try to go point two five. Okay, let's see. Look at that, dude. Look at that. Dude. dude. Yeah, back up over his head. Could you, could you boy the wasn't there. What if, what if the pressure of that <laughs> truck was enough, dude? Dude, I'm not gonna lie. Like I actually like uh, thought I was gonna die there because it, it, what the angle of the tire, like it ran over my hand and it literally stopped next to my face. And I'm like, at that moment, I was like, if this continues to, if, if this continues six inches trajectory, I'm a pancake. So if you didn't, didn't pack up, if you didn't pack and, up, and you're just, dead. It just stopped right there, dude. Oh like, my god! Yeah, you. I remember you uh, telling me something like that. Not trying to like, like dramatize it, but seriously, man. No, you told me that you the, just like, fucking dramatized the shit out of it. What are you talking about? <laughs> but seriously, that's that's what I felt, man. I mean, no, I mean that's insane. what we're looking for too. Is like the real deal, what you were feeling, because that is crazy to see it, even in you know the the fucking 
1080p it's what is 1080p garbage now whatever no 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 no, no. this is like fucking like 105 h <laughs> oh. so your your head's like right under the tire okay that, yeah so wow. what okay. i was shout out to hank dude dude fucking... hank like the reflex there it was yeah, like the reflex dude. dude and hank smoked a lot of weed back then so the reflex is just like i don't know if you, if i was a homie though i i think i would try my hardest to do what hank did though word, you know? word, word. i would just i'm fucking, not, I'm not I trying to just, down well i would break a bone to try and get the truck up you no, know so danny what i thought the story was because i remember like you telling me the story like as or day after it happened or a couple days after it happened i thought the the tire went in front of your head i didn't know it was like about to run your face over no nah, that was cheek that was definitely some cheek action damn that's yeah. insane i didn't know that was the story okay yeah i didn't know it was like that close if that guy didn't stop and reverse you your yeah. life would be a little different yeah yeah what a trip dude yeah it was cool I'm... though and, and and the funny thing man is like at the end of that it night... was cool he says <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is like the end of that night i remember uh like as soon as i got out of the police station and just got back in the van we just drove to the next town next like show. nothing happened <laughs> it's like here's your here's your thir- 13 dollars dude right <laughs> yeah dude, I, remember, I remember being like, like, but like light, dude. dude yeah i remember being drunk and i remember telling these guys i was like you know what that absolutely sucked i almost died but you know what i'm gonna have this story for the rest of my life <laughs> oh dude it hey, dude, with me get forever. extra slice of go, pepperoni man. dude come yeah. on <laughs> Anyways, dude, you want Taco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> we got you tonight, dude. Yeah, do you want your the reverse part of your body to fucking blow up? Or do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane though, man. I, I always thought like the story in my head was that because I was I heard it after the fact that after it happened, and like me and Steve Jones were in a van and we heard the story like Danny like got almost got ran over, but he like moved out of the way or something. And I didn't know the, the the wheel was the trajectory was for your head. I thought it just missed your head, is what we were always told. Ah, oh, dude, damn, Stop right on the face. Fucking <laughs> hey, dude. Christ. Yeah, like some well, movie, some movie shit, dude. <laughs> and it, it was it was always told to me that like, oh, dude, Danny got all fucked up and like tried to fight someone outside, tried to fight a bouncer. That's what I heard. That's a, that's the story yeah. I heard. What was nah. that that Danny tried to fight a bouncer? And then he like got in a fight with the bouncer, and then he fell, and then the truck almost hit his head. That's what no, I heard. Danny got into a fight with the drummer of Through the Eyes of the Dead, who got into a fight with five gang members who might just beat up. <laughs> and then the next day, Danny was sad and drank beers, and then some jag off at the Through the Eyes of the Dead show. Damn, dude, Danny's head you. out the way. Yeah, and so then... You and Mike got you guys were like fighting that in Pomona. Yeah, dude, Mike fucking headbutt me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the, that was did that it, that it? whole thing in Pomona. That was that whole because I remember there was like a well, big. Well, I think brawl they got into rumble. like a thing with uh, uh, Elliot, uh, who was running merch for us. Oh, dude, you guys and Elliot, dude, that was you guys and Elliot. Crazy, Elliot bro. was adorable, and I remember someone in your band. It was in our van after everything happened. They're like, "Fuck Elliot, fucking blah blah," and I was like, "Elliot's a cutie pie. You cannot talk." Might have been Mike. But I might was, it was I was like, and he and and because that started like, it all that day, dude. And then our van, like someone like punched out the window or something. Yeah. And... Yep. Oh my god, dude. Yo, Justin, do, you so remember, do you remember? Do you remember? All of us were like, we were like, whoa, I quit. Well, I quit too. You like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, remember, no, no, I remember. I was fucking done, then, dude. I was like, then, after this tour, I don't even know. I was like, I, I think I'm just gonna go home now. So, so that, but then we were, we were like, okay, well, we all live on the East Coast, and we're literally like, here, <laughs> Pomona. Yeah. Oh, we might as well play find shows. The hardest place to break up. So, so we were like, do we drive <laughs> back 36 hours home, tonight, or or do we get a hotel? We got a hotel, and I remember uh, vividly remember this. We all got a hotel. Nobody's talking to each other. Turn the TV on and it's Metallica playing live, like in front of millions of people. And, and? and like we're, we're all still awake, just watching yeah? it, but nobody okay. says a word to each other. Yeah. And you can like tell everybody's everywhere. thinking the same thing. Like, yeah, we could be this, but no, yeah, <laughs> we're too busy doing this. 
we're too busy fucking sulking in a fucking motel six right now guys <laughs> that's Let's so fucking good go get waffle house in the morning yeah we'll yeah, leave, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. fucking we'll damp, reassess we'll reassess yeah. reassess damp, and we, we can alone. reconnect on runny dumps like after we eat waffle house <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's crazy man that's yeah, that was kind of like a myth. That was like a mythological story. Even though I was there, I was right I've, by the door when it all happened. I heard like a bunch of commotion go outside, and I went back. I just did turn the other way. And left. Bro, I was no, like, fa no fabrication on that. Like uh, I, 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 like I intentionally omitted like the small details that I just gave. Like at first, yeah. but I remember that day like it was it happened yesterday. Dude, we we yeah. but we've all toured enough to know those days. Fuck yeah. We're what we're, we're all thinking like what the fuck are we doing out here? Like yeah. are we gonna throw well, Dan, it in? Uh, right Danny now? like lived in a legend a, a mythology legend in my mind after the after that day. Cause I remember like thinking uh, finding out like how close he almost died or something, like way later. And you were like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> the next day, yeah, you were just okay. like, yeah, shit happens, uh, whatever. And I remember like actually hearing the story like way later, and I was like, oh my god. And there was like a bunch of my friends outside going like, dude, he almost like fucking died. That was insane. And I was like hearing secondhand stories, and then seeing that, and then knowing that the tire was on your fucking head. Like I thought it was gonna just give you a haircut. I didn't know it was gonna fucking squash your melon. Like I had no idea. Yeah. That's insane, man. It's always yeah. been a question that I've, I've had in my mind. Like, and I've, I've literally like thought about that. Like I told you multiple times. And like, what's Danny up to? Danny, like looking you up, just like talking. What's up, Danny? Like trying to like hit you up, because like that was like you were one of the more hilarious folks I've toured with. You were like down to drink, down and obviously me as well. Um, down to like have a good time, and that. I was like, is Danny in like jail now? <laughs> that's, like, that's like literally my thought process. It's like Danny's like fine jail, dude. <laughs> jail. Uh, dude. I just I I fucking I honestly hate social media that much. Yeah, yeah. good Stop good for you, it, man. Dude. Good for you for st staying. I haven't been on it for like fucking over ten years. That's that's impressive. I mean, what we were saying in the beginning, dude, it's not really. I I, I was thinking of the things that I'm on it for is just for family members, really. And to promote this shit. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. <laughs> it was only fan members and then we fan members, family members, and then we did this podcasting, and then people started caring about us again. And so now I I do the podcast thing, but I still am just like, I just want to talk to my grandma, <laughs> you know. I literally am just keeping in touch with my family members so all right answer this question real quick danny did rain ran headbutt you ran how do you say it yeah <laughs> all right I'm not, I'm not gonna lie i know Ian, i know ian's got stories so. <laughs> <laughs> mike's like literally like a fucking blood brother to me dude yeah but. yeah we had a fall that night, and he gave me a really good headbutt, dude. Yeah. Really good headbutt. I dude think, I, a, I, think I, I, I... Build I, up I, to the headbutt. What, no, what like, happened? Think, what? Ah, oh, man. Fuck. What did happen? So, like, he came back. He got, like... That, that shit where you were saying where, like, he beat up those fucking <laughs> five guys or whatever. Uh, he came back, and, and his hand was, like, bloody, and he was, like, I just <laughs> did, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh... I forget what exactly got to that point, but I think like I don't know, man. It was just like we all kind of were really. Could you say it might be a, your a little bit of your attitude in the moment, maybe? <sighs> Danny, Danny's a nice sweetheart. He's has never had an attitude. In his I'm life. not. I'm not saying that you do have an attitude. No, I'm just man, saying I think if no, somebody headbutts you out of nowhere, no, Danny gets spicy. No, no, I, gets spicy. I, I, I got, I got Danny, spicy for sure. But yeah, like, Danny and Mike get spicy. It was just something like <laughs> I think like just that happened, and then like uh, I don't know, man. It was just like somebody was like, "I'm not doing this band anymore," and then like I think I think Mike was like. Well, I'm not doing this shit either. And then I was like, 
I'm not doing this shit either. And then my <laughs> immediately to me was like, shut your little pussy ass up. Bro. And I was like, what you say, motherfucker? And I got in his face. And then we were just like in each other's faces. And then I don't know if I swung first or he headbutt me first, but it got physical. Out of all the people I've toured with, I think probably the two people I would probably would not fuck would not fuck with would be Danny or Mike. I mean, those <laughs> two people I wouldn't fuck with. You guys, you guys were hard, dude. That's just how it is. Like that was the a quiet thing, dude, van ride. Dude. It was, dude. No, 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 no. Hold on, it gets better. But the, the van ride back, it was quiet. But then, do you remember? I remember this. Uh, like it was very quiet, and then Mike sitting behind me, and I felt like it was Goodfellas. Like this guy's about to fucking whack me because it was just way too quiet. And, 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 and Mike was like, he's like. It's like, Dan, you know how bad I want to smash my phone over your fucking head. Uh, dude, you're like, dude, <laughs> right. dude, it's true, dude. And, 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 he dude, didn't I have turned, a gun. But he's like, oh, dude, I got the one I did. I turned I around and I looked at him like the Terminator. I was like, then do it. Oh, those two? <laughs> then <laughs> do it, dude. <laughs> I'd pay money for those that fight. I'd pay money for that fight. I'd pay like. Dude, <laughs> the funny thing is, like, I think the day after, you know, we apologized and then, like, yeah. we became even better, like, friends you know what i mean like it was just like all right you know you don't back down i don't back down all over. Yeah, you guys are two great friends like if if you guys were on on the west coast you guys would be like my boys <laughs> like, <laughs> like you guys are fucking dude, i, I feel like i want i wish you guys were with here in person right now you guys are homies dude these these are the types of people that i would want to be surrounding myself with Dude, dude Mike, Mike is like such a homie, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, I I love such a homie. His, his style is just like, it's most it's about res, you know it's respect. You got to respect the dude, and same with same with you, Danny. It's like respect. It's like don't disrespect me. Don't be an asshole. Don't be an idiot. Well, I'd I mean. be the respectful one, just watching you guys do the the fucking crazy shit, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> I'm the homie watching these guys wrestle real quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna duke it out for a second, and then we're gonna all have a drink after. <laughs> yeah, like you're it. like, dude, that was crazy. How you did that? You know, I feel like me and me and Justin are like more we're more beefy like dudes, but like we see you guys, we're like, Jesus, calm down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want all this fucking drama. You guys, are, but then they watch it happen. I'm like, this is fucking. Grade A fucking material. To watch right now. <laughs> it's like I want a front row seat to Mike versus Pomona. Oh, <laughs> oh Mike versus Pomona. yeah, that was bananas. What I saw was bananas. But anyways, that that dude is super chill, Mike. But Cali Death yeah, Podcast yeah. Fest 2025, dude. You guys are gonna do the <laughs> main event. We'll just turn it into like a UFC thing with bands. <laughs> would, as long as as long as uh. As long as I get some severed savior, odious mortem, and uh, anomalist, man. Oh yeah, hell yeah! They, they got, they, they all got to perform, and uh, ontogeny. Hell yeah! Oh dude. fuck yeah! Yeah, Nate was just in here. That'd be. We'll do. We'll do the whole. <laughs> we'll do the soundtrack to all your fights, dude, and you just fight everybody, <laughs> dude. Just fucking start punching people, dude. No, honestly, I would say if I had to pick like a heavy, like a a, a fighting championship of everyone I've toured with, I would say a guy maybe from from uh red, red cord yeah I think he, yeah he guy would down. fuck some shit up yeah yeah guy I'm versus frank like, <laughs> guy, uh, frank is he's older though so maybe frank in his prime guy would fuck frank up guy like right now like it's not him up, dude. Guy uh, so in his yeah, prime, guy, yeah. Dude. i think uh i think danny would be like a like a champion like holding a belt in in the uh realm of the ufc death metal metal championships of fighting <laughs> and mike too mike has that face he has that like that like not knock knock outable face like i think chin. yeah i think mike hamilton it. would low-key be somebody can yeah. hold his shit down he would yeah. he would fuck somebody up dude hamilton's yeah, always think... been like solid yeah no i definitely wouldn't he'd fuck me up instantly I'm trying to think. Glenn Benton. I, I love out. that we started this thing. Like, dude, <laughs> death metal was so fucking cool at the shows. Nobody like fucks with each other. <laughs> I'm bringing <laughs> aggressive fighting. Into and then the by the end, scene. we're like, let's turn this shit into a UFC thing, dude. <laughs> Who are we going to put against? Death match, dude. <laughs> dude, 
Eric Rutan would definitely <laughs> kill him. Ooh, I've seen him he piss. Would, yeah, I've seen I've secret, toured with him. I think that he would be like a dude who had secret moves that nobody even knew about. <laughs> I think Ru- yeah, Rutan could I think Rutan could fuck up Corpse Grinder. I think no, I, I think so too. I think that I think so too, Eric man. Rutan could yeah. probably fuck up all of the Florida the, scene. The if funny really thing is about it. Eric Rutan looks like he's fucking six foot eleven on stage, but he's like oh, five yeah, yeah. foot eight in person. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, totally. I love you, Corpse Grinder, but all you do is get stuffies and claws, dude. You're not <laughs> training. Rutan's training, dude. Well, no, no, no. Well, the thing still... is, he Corpse Grinder's got size on him. That that means a lot. So, like, if if oh, Jesus Christ, we're going into if they're UFC fighters. Um, <laughs> if Corpse Grinder got like a good punch on him, I think Rutan would be done. But Rutan, I've seen him pissed. I've toured with him. I've seen him like angry. Yeah. That dude's like, yeah, he gets up there. He's he's almost Danny Rodriguez like level. Like he's got he's those almost... pointy ass PC wrenches too, man. Like yeah, just, just get like, like you know stuffed insane. animals. <laughs> Dude, Rutan is so sick. He's so sick. Oh, yeah. I love that he's guy so, so much. Sick. Such a nice and, dude. Hate Eternal is a quiet like uh quiet possibly mount rushmore band yeah yeah i i I shouldn't say quiet (laughs) because obviously they made their splash and i I, that's why i stopped because i said quiet i was like oh shit why am i saying quiet but it really is a uh silent killer in the influence of things fuck yeah you know what i'm saying nobody really mentions Conquering the throne, but conquering the throne. Dear, dear God. Dude, yeah, that yeah. fucking album. I, I, I still think that's their best album. Oh, and, yeah. I, I, Something that, and, and, but that's what I'm saying is in the conversation of what progresses things further, conquering the throne isn't talked about enough. Just like monstrosity, imperial doom isn't talked yeah, yeah. about enough. And Vaughn made that, uh, Put put that back into my attention this week, where he said that, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, dude, Imperial Doom is just not. Why why is everybody talking about all this other Florida shit?" But in no dark way. purity though, in dark purity with them too is like a little catchy one. That was like the one that's like totally kind of about the groove. Like like monstrosity is humongous for death metal. Let's... Yeah, but go back to Imperial Doom and you realize like. That's just as solid as any other contributor from the Florida scene at that time, no doubt. Yeah. My favorite was a uh, male. Uh, see, I almost said it. Malevolent creation. Until I was like twenty-seven, it was like, dude, I love male violent creation, dude. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> male violent, dude. <laughs> I remember touring with uh, Born of Osiris and there's all sweethearts. I love all those guys, but uh, the bass player was like, Deicide, never heard of him. And we were just like, What? He's all, No, Deicide. We were showing him albums. He's like, No, never heard of him ever. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to like nerd out so hard, like, Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just you know, it's all the all the time and dedication we put into uh, like, what a defeat when you're like, oh, dude, this band, and they're like, oh, I have no idea, but like this band, and you're like, mm. you you hit a wall when you're trying to, you know, talk. I try to do my best too when I do. I do my best now because one thing I hate, one of the things I hate when people go like, you ever seen this movie, and you're like. Should I lie and say yes, or should I and should just tell the truth and say no? I'm I like, say no now, all the time. Now I'll say no, but then like what? And I'm like, don't do that. I'll say that immediately. I say don't no even if I saw the movie, dude. And just when people go like, out, what? Dude. You haven't seen it? I'm like, don't do that reaction. I don't like that. That's why I was gonna lie to you, but I didn't lie to you. <laughs> so like, I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want this like big. Th- I don't want to watch it right now. I'm not. I don't want to watch yeah. it right now. Like you know, yeah. it's like oh, do you have to watch it right now, dude? Oh, Most people do f- make you feel that way. Like we gotta sit down right now. Movie. Clear your exactly. schedule, dude. We're watching it Clear right schedule. now, dude. I I definitely am like that when it comes to like bands that I like seriously want people to listen to. But yeah. I've learned to just like shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, <laughs> because I will. 
not stop talking. <laughs> if you want somebody else to like at least dip their toes into that, you got to feed it to them properly. You can't yeah. scare them off. You know, like right. what? You're an idiot. You haven't seen that? You fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. you, heard it? you don't just <laughs> run up to a person on the street and give them a five course meal. You gotta, <laughs> an invitation needs to be sent out. Right. You know, somewhere right. placed. Give them a napkin or something. <laughs> Water. And something that exactly. you know from previous. Uh, the day Are you want, drinking like, any oh, yeah, other like green than tea? Tonight? Okay. Perfectly tempered. <laughs> Temperatured green tea. It's there. All right. Now let me show you about this fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> you don't just go up to somebody and you're like, hey, uh, artificial brain sumac, uh, <laughs> Kowloon Walled City. My name's Danny. <laughs> let, me, let me pitch this three hour movie that you don't know anything about. Like, yeah. That's so perfect. That's I mean, that's what your brain wants to do. That's why I always like fight it because I don't like when people do that to me. Go like, what? I'm like, don't yeah. do that. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. No, don't play it. <laughs> I get like that. I like rebel against that. I'm like, I don't. It probably sucks now because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'll get like because I, I hate when people are like, what? you're dumb. Stuff. You're dumb and you don't know. And I'm but like, we were just yeah, talking. Dumb. About I'll, I'll remain dumb. Reaction. I'll remain dumb. I would like to remain dumb then. I don't my life's been great before this album. If you're reacting like that, I, I get like defensive. I'm like, oh sick dude. I don't fucking want to hear it now. It probably sucks. <laughs> it definitely sucks. <laughs> it definitely sucks. Yeah. The, your reaction tells me it sucks. Like I just don't <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck. Well, we're pushing three and a half hours, guys. And think oh, proud shit, of that. Dude. We're at three thirty. Oh proud. man. Yeah. And Thank you guys for coming good. on. That was fucking so much fun. You got I want to have you guys on again as many times as you want to come on. Yeah, you guys uh, are rad, dude. Justin, oh, yeah. Danny, I'm, I'm. Let's keep in touch, dude. You guys are homies now for me, dude. dude oh, yeah, yeah, get on Instagram, Danny. Half let's hours later, up. let's fucking go. <laughs> no, nah, dude, Danny, let's let's do. I like to text, dude. Let's just get phone numbers, dude. I don't, yeah, I, dude. I don't need to be on social media to talk to you, dude. Let's fucking chat on the phone. I want, dude. you know, you know, yeah. I want Danny to battle. I want Danny to battle. Um, battle. See this UFC fighting shit. <laughs> um, but, uh, Kevin, Kevin from a uh, Kevin from a uh, alluvial. Because battle, it's like Chicago. Why do you want to, you want to uh, battle uh, them? Yeah, no, Kevin's sick, man. No, no, no. But like this, the Chicago. He always goes like East Coast. Fucking blah blah, and I always go like, yeah, because that's because you're all like dumb and stuff. But like, I always like we joke around, and he goes like, oh, whatever, you want all the tech stuff, you fucking techie. Well, he, like we go back and forth, and I love he he rips on me hard. I love it. I love that like he I, throws uh, it back super hard. Not 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 to extend this past, but I don't want to make this four. Oh, no, keep going. But uh, no, dude, they we, played uh, yeah. Reggie's in Chicago, and it was his birthday, and uh, I bought him a. Uh, Black Tooth Grin, or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Dimebag. Pantera drink, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But at this Whiskey bar, and, uh, they charge Coke. you for every shot, yeah. Prom so it was $44, Coke. yeah, yeah. And uh, $44 for a fucking... A Black Tooth Grin's a shot, it's dude. Seven, no, it's, 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 it's two Seagram's and two Crown Royals, I believe. A Black double, Tooth double. Grin, I thought, was just a shot of... Crown with a crown, splash a splash of, of coke. two crowns, oh. two secret sevens. Let's see a double, a double. So a double, a, tr- right. a, qu- oh, quadruple. a quadruple, a quadruple, <laughs> quadruple. Oh my god. Anyways, uh, I got a bit, and he did not want to finish it, and then I finished it for him. So, <laughs> mm, <laughs> fuck a quad crown and coke, dude. Kevin rules though. No, I love Kevin. No, nah, Kev's the shit, dude. He's been on a couple of times. Wes is awesome, too. I'd love to have him back on, dude. That guy is the interesting as shit. Um, his style is so... you like. It's the closest dime bag I've ever seen is Wes. Yeah. That's the closest dime bag that's alive, I think. <laughs> well, I remember they were announcing like a new Pantera lineup. I'm like, I'm like messaging Wes, like it's gotta be you, right? And it's like Zach Wild, which you know makes sense. It's one, it's Dimebag's best friend. Yeah, it's but I was, 
but I was like, no, but Wes could nail it. Like almost he would he would find every bend and nail it perfectly. Like that's what he does, you know. But um, but yeah, no, all those guys, Alluvial, Jesus Christ, great band. Fucking one of my that was my favorite album of the year a couple years ago. And their new shit they're releasing is great. Uh Wes is top of the line guitar player. Fucking Kevin is pretty good, pretty good gamer. He's all right. But uh, I'm just kidding. We all are top of the line, <laughs> too, guys. Through the Eyes of the Dead has always been a name that never was forgotten for me. And um, fuck yeah, the the metalcore, deathcore thing that you were a part of my first introduction to all that, and and going back to listen to it, I. I don't know if I said it on the episode, but pre pod, I let you guys know you guys give me a nice dose of nostalgia. And I, th- I think that that's very important for progressing this thing further. We need to remind the newer generations of what's happening 20, 30 years ago. And I'm not saying that you guys are doing that with the new album. I'm just saying there's this essence that you guys still have, you know, and, and, and I don't know how you, you harness that in your thing. I don't even know if I'm doing it anymore, but you guys did it for me. So that's what I'm saying. One person on the podcast to let you know, you gave me that essence. Dude, that's, it's sick hearing that from you you know just because it's like it's it's almost like uh i don't want to say different strokes as far as music goes but it's like you know you're 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 a heavy hitter when it comes to like that like don't give them too much fucking ego shit i don't want to hear all this nah, but, it, but dude it's like it's like you know it, i didn't say anything yet honestly, <laughs> like, why, so why would you stop him from giving me the <laughs> nah, dude it's like it's like you wouldn't think that you guys would be into our shit to put it blank. oh yeah fuck and, yeah and, i mean to know. be honest with you like not not i didn't really like know your guys music until touring with you guys and you guys were right before suffocation every night i watched every set you guys did dude and i was like we, this is a pro band this before like, that tour justin we were talking we were like dude so do we play like all the death metal songs like how do we even <laughs> hang with these motherfuckers no you yeah, guys i was super sick, intimidated dude. yeah no you you guys did awesome i was and, like and, you know, it was we, cool. were, we were we're like prof- we're professional trying to be fresh professional band watching because we kind of like jumped in quick and we're like how does it how is it done <laughs> like please let us know how it's done and you guys did fucking phenomenal dude like it was so like the stage presence and everything was i was like fuck we have to start we'd have conversations in the van going like we have to move around more dude i know we're doing like technical stuff <laughs> but like we gotta like give more of a presence on stage because these guys are crushing us in a healthy way. Dude, but like Bill, we need to learn. Yeah. I remember Bill uh he said uh he said, Hey, make some noise for through the guys who give head. Oh no, I I, I, I made that I was gonna say that I was I was holding on the, I made that up. That was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. No, it, it, was, it was three young guys to give head. But uh three young guys to give head that's even better. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, because we we always came up with like different names for people. Because Decrepit Birth was like a hard one to make fun of. So yeah. Whitechapel was Brown Chapped Hole. Uh, Cephalic Carnage was Cephalic Garbage. I forget what we did. Um, but they did uh, uh, Odious Mortem, Chodius Scrotum. Scrotum. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And there was uh, Deeds of Flesh was uh, Dudes Are Fresh. <laughs> no, Dudes Are Fresh. That was my favorite. One. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like, you can't do. You can't like you can't treat Decrepit Birth like Decrepit Girth. I don't know, it's not even yeah. funny. Well, there was yeah. there was the the Canadians. The the, surf, the, we, they called us Secret we, Bird. Because there was bird. a we got a, a merch shipment that said Secret Bird on it. And it was <laughs> in it was in it was in Montreal. And they were just like Secret Bird. What the fuck? So they started calling us Secret yeah. Bird. But it was Hail, like a Hail Mary <laughs> attempt. <laughs> yeah. It's actually pretty close. If you really think about it, it's not that far off. <laughs> Decrepit secret. Secret. We're only missing uh, a few syllables in there, you know. Oh no, uh, Mike Hamilton, the best one. Mike Hamilton told me on tour with, uh, or it might have been Cephalic, but on tour with a uh, uh, dying pe- dying penis. Um, it dying was, penis. It, no, no, no. It was it was, it was crying penis. Sick. 
crying penis was the one that they were going because like it was deep no it was deeds of flesh and dying I, penis are going back to dying penis ever like, since dying penis, that was an no, ever since the diabetes meme happened it's yeah. never gonna be anything other than dying fetus or diabetes for me <laughs> oh dude. dude it's crying it's penis so when it, they told me crying penis i was like I was like, all right, well, forever. Man, See, sad, I even was trying to say dying fetus name. Penis. I yeah, up. no, that's crazy, <laughs> dude. I'm still fucking up over that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the wars of like, I mean, as as a joke, because you know we're on tour, we're up, we have to find little things to have fun with, and and band names. Like we're like these guys in a band to like have a name behind us. Like we got to make fun of it. Like there's no way we we can't make fun of like like White Chapel, the Brown Chapped Hole was the best I can come up with. But there was a, uh, oh no, uh, Hate Eternal. No, we fucking Bill clowned Hate Eternal on stage once, and that was bad. Um, because there was a video of of Eric going like, it's uh, uh, he was like, it's fucking. He said this like line, it's wakey wakey time. So it's <laughs> wakey wakey time. <laughs> and then um. Uh, what did bill i told bill to say something on stage and i was like don't do it though like it's a joke <laughs> and then he's all i forget he said something bad like he, we made something bad up and then like after eric was like kind of bummed and then i told bill like dude you should say it's makey makeup time <laughs> and, then, like, <laughs> and it was at fucking san francisco like sold out show he's all Sorry, sorry about last night, fucking Eric. It's makey wake up time. <laughs> and I was like, dude, <laughs> I can't believe you pulled like Bill thought it was so funny. He's like, I'm just gonna fucking do it. And I'm like, all right, well, it's on you, dude. I just like set it in the van and <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. Bill doesn't care, dude. He's fucking oh, he doesn't give a rock, shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't give a fuck. But <laughs> fuck. Got butt fuck. Dude, butt fuck. It was <laughs> dude. This is rad, guys. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Had a great time. I had a, I had a great time tonight, guys. Uh, when you, when you look at the time and it's 3:40, 3, 3 <laughs> hours and 40 minutes and I I don't feel like I don't feel like I've been here for 2 hours, dude. All no, right. That's good. Yeah. No, that's totally. Good. No, I you guys fucking blast, awesome. man. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, we'll definitely. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Dude, Let's you guys are touch. welcome back. Anytime you guys want, we're literally ready to fucking hang out with you guys, dude. <clears throat> all right, I'm 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 drunk as shit right now, guys. Get me out of here. Get me out of here somewhere. <laughs> Girl, I'm leave, stuck. leave. Hold me Girl, out. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> Siri, leave. Siri, leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a well, dude. I can see you guys at the top. Just I'm gonna send me a bucket that dude, I can grab onto. What, we gotta do this again, and uh, maybe Hell next yeah. time. You know, when you guys, I know you guys got busy or whatever, but just obscure death metal bands we just talked about obscure death metal bands that would be that's what's all right no those yeah let's, let's get that. oh yeah is, uh all yeah. like that's children that's we talk what about all excites children. us all <laughs> yeah. and that's actually a pattern that i see is the dissonance is making us old school dudes get Fuck, yeah. excited again dude so that's yeah yeah you're on it dude danny's got that fucking vibe dude all right justin dude I had a great time with you tonight, too, dude. You guys are so fucking cool, dude. God, <laughs> I, I told I told Anthony like, you love these guys, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I I had a great time tonight, and I I want to keep in touch with you guys. I I don't want to do any plugs, dude. Just fucking buy a coffee from Deeds of Flesh. <laughs> Go fucking jam and SoCal at Generator Rehearsal Studios, and. <laughs> Buy the fucking through the eyes of the dead merch. Where is that? The band camp you said, right? Uh, big cartel. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. God damn it, Jill. <laughs> I'm getting click happy. Go, dude. Just go to our MySpace. Go to MySpace <laughs> slash dot com slash T T E O D or E O T D. Is it T T E O T D? There right. you go. Acronyms are hard if you it's, really it's think about it. It's easier for me. Teal Todd is that. That's how I. Teal Todd. Teal Todd. You have a yeah. Teal Todd. 
sick, dude. I'm glad we ended it like that. <laughs> All right, you guys. No, got I love that? you guys. Yeah, I love you guys. You guys are fucking no, rad. Yes, rule, man. This was fucking you, so fun. Yeah, I had so much fun with you guys on tour, and I was like, oh, always thinking about getting you guys on. I saw some resurgence of you guys jumping up and playing shows again, and I was like, oh, you're popping up my feed, and I was like, fucking these guys, you know, like goddamn these guys. I for- well, I mean, Old that's man. really the, the thing about the show is we just want to kick it with the homies, dude. Fuck we yeah. literally just want to kick it with the homies. That green room, the backstage area where we're all on a bill and we're just fucking back there sipping on the whatever bullshit they're giving us, eating on whatever the fuck they got, shitty bathrooms, whatever, but we're still just sitting there practicing. This we're is fucking, it, dude. you know, this the, platform it, is nice. Yeah. And, and we love that part of whatever we did back in the day and we just want to just try and recreate it virtually on this fucking shit you know the only and... thing missing is the veggie spread man <laughs> <laughs> the veggies and the hummus dude little fucking <laughs> celery and carrot fucking dip dip situation, and the dude. chuggalos fighting outside the venue <laughs> <laughs> and the people Almost getting ran over yeah dude yeah, i want to put some random that, comments dude. that weren't put put in here here's one Two rules, no hits below the belt, and time for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, John Longstreth does Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> well, anyway, all right. All right, I'm, I'm too, all right, anyways, I just want to throw that out there. All right, no, but, uh, for sure, dude. Danny and Justin, you guys are rad as fuck, dude. We'll, we'll definitely keep in touch after this. Thank you for everybody that's been in the chat. And uh yeah, you guys know everything I plug every week, dude. Um, Twitch, YouTube, uh blah blah blah. Love you guys, have a good weekend. We'll see you next week. Thanks for Rock having us, on. Guys. Peace out. Thank mm-hmm. you.